You get up pretty early in the morning to see Ralph Friedgen and his Maryland Terrapins take that walk down Turf Alley. The fans gather in 40,000 strong for homecoming today as Sitco presents ACC football. Jefferson Pilot Sports presentation of today's game, the homecoming battle between the Maryland Terrapins and the Duke Blue Devils from College Park for luck and they all need some luck this afternoon their series record against Duke very successful five out of six but the loss was two years ago at homecoming let's bring in the third member of our team to talk about the QBs in today's game here's Mike Hogwood yes Steve, the QBs are going to play a big part of today's game and we'll start with Duke D Bryant this is a guy in his second year as a starter he's made great progress but he's not at full speed he's got a bum ankle and that will limit him some today but he may have had a breakout game last week against Wake Forest where he ran for two touchdowns, threw for another one. A lot rests on his shoulders today. Now for Sean Hill, the quarterback of Maryland, he's playing his third offense in three years. He's getting better every week. And Ralph Regan says for Maryland to win a championship, he has to get better throwing the football. Vidad Selikovic will kick it off as Duke wins the coin toss and elects to receive. And with it is Douglas, and four yards deep into the end zone, he'll stay right there. And that's where Duke will open up first and ten with the opening kick. And, of course, Dee Bryant, the junior from Detroit, Michigan, who came off with a big week last week, as Mike said, 256 yards. And let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineups. Mike Hart, at least one catch, the tight end in the last 18 games. Douglas Moore, Ertel Jack, and Love, the receivers and skill players. And up front, John Miller is the guy we're going to really focus on. He'll have that task to try to block Roundtree for Maryland. Uh, offensive line has got to give Bryant some time. Here comes Duke, first and ten at their own 20-yard line. D. Bryant with Chris Douglas in back of him. Or Ertel Jack out there wide. Long count. And we're underway. First play from scrimmage, incomplete intended for Ertel Jack with Tony Jackson covering. Let's continue our look at the starting lineups with a look at a very good crew. Charles Hill, 2000 ACC All-Academic, and he's on line to be it for a third straight year with Duran Roundtree and C.J. Feldheim. And boy, the, a linebacker group, uh, you, you talk about the Butkus Award nominee, Henderson, awesome, but Whaley, Joe, these guys are all equally as good. Tony Jackson, the strong safety, might be as good as anybody in the country. Second down and 10. Duke at their own 20, Bryant. Kyle Moore split out wide to the short side. He's looking in his direction and passes complete. No, dropped by the tight end. Did not have control of it as he went out of bounds at the 36-yard line. It brings up third and ten. Had to be a glare in his eyes. Mike Hart, excellent, excellent tight end for Duke. Two opportunities now, Steve, early on. Missed. Should have moved the chains already. Duke has a tough time. Third down conversions. They're 30% for the year, but, Doc, they are 4 of 44 in third and seven or longer. Can't win. Very, very difficult. Douglas the tailback. Sharp is the slot receiver to the wide side of the field. Bryant looking left. Big rush is on. And that is typical Maryland. They will bring the house on third and long, and they get a flag in the Duke backfield. Well, that's a gift. Well, that's on Duke, yeah. Didn't get outside of the pocket. He grounded the football. Yeah. And again, great, great safety work again. Ty Stewart, you saw you'll see 29 in your picture. This is why Duke doesn't want to get in obvious passing situations. Now watch inside. See, there comes the floodgate. Everybody going inside on the rush. Then you see the route. Receivers had a chance, but quarterback had nobody to throw to. Once again, inside pressure. Awesome. Ty Stewart. Trey McDonald with a punt. And calling for it on the fair catch is Jillian Gary. And that's where Maryland will start first and 10 at their own 43 yard line so three downs and out for the Duke Blue Devils and they punt the ball away and Maryland will open up on the short side of the field Bruce Perry leads the way 276 yards against Wake Chad Killian gets to start at fullback today Gary Jafar Williams and Jeff Dugan the receivers and then up front again an offensive line that has really been a great movement for this team Fowler Jr. the outstanding center 38-yard punt sets up Maryland at their own 42. Sean Hill at quarterback. There's the pitch to Perry on the corner. And Perry gets out over the 45-yard line, and he's brought down there by Josh Kreider. And let's take a look at that defense. Matt Zielinski moved from outside to inside. He'll join Sean Johnson and Charles Porter as the front three. Of course, 
Ryan Fowler, here's a man who's just an, uh, an Iron Man for Duke. You'll also have Small and, uh, and Harris will be in the backfield as well. Hamilton outstanding on the corner. These guys have got to play very, very well today in order to keep Duke in the ballgame. Second down and four after the six-yard gain by Perry. Here's the ride to the fullback, the pitch to the corner to Parson. And Parson gets first down, yardage and more. Has two backs to beat and is dragged down at the 20-yard line. Rich Parson is a true freshman. And he's having an impact from Newark, Delaware. Yeah, Rich is the X factor in this offense. Not to mention Mark Riley, who's the backup. Here's a young man who's been good in the passing game. What great defense up until the pitch. There it is. Make the tackle. You got it going on. If you miss it, this young man can fly. First and 10 on a 34-yard gain into Duke territory at the 21. Here comes a handoff to Perry. Big opening off left tackle. Wider can't catch him. Hamilton finally rides him down to the five-yard line. And it's a 16-yard gain for Bruce Perry. Now, Steve, part of us would all like to play linebacker at some point of our career. Well, here you go. Right in your living room. Great double-team block. Man on man. Good back makes linebacker miss. Great back scores. This guy's super. He nearly did. Done it all on the ground, Doc. 53 yards in three plays, including the 33-yard end around by Rich Parson. I like Perry. You know, Perry wants to get his numbers back up following Georgia Tech. Only 59 yards against the Yellow Jackets. First and goal from the six. Perry headed down to the two and then runs into a wall. And leading the way inside there was Jamian, Jamian Small, who had 20 tackles a week ago against Wake Forest. They stop him after a three-yard game. Big Lamar Bryant, another one of those 300-pounders up front for Bruce Perry. I like Bruce a lot. I felt like Bruce was nicked up against Georgia Tech, but yet he never mentioned it. He just continued to play, and that's the mark of an outstanding football player. So far, Doc, three carries, 26 yards. Second down and goal. You look at the red zone offense. Maryland doesn't get denied very often when they get down here. Here's Hill into the end zone. Quick touchdown, Duke. Stealing. The Maryland Terrapins go up on top, six to nothing. Sean Hill with the run. Boy, that's that's, that's tough, Steve. One of my keys in the ball game. I felt like Duke needed to score first, so we're already 0 for one in that category. You go back to Earl Jack's drop, and you go back in the first half, in the first possession rather, to Mike Hart his drop. Maryland shouldn't be on the field now, but they are, and they've scored. Nick Novak, big man on campus after that 46-yard field goal that tied the Georgia Tech game last week. On out of the hole for the extra point, and Maryland goes up 7-0 as Sean Hill, with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season, calls his own number around left end, untouched for the score, and Maryland's on top. There's Sean Hill. He's phoning the booth. All runs that play, and the best one executed by him at the end from two yards out, capped a five-play march in 58 yards. Hill's three-yard touchdown run puts Maryland up on Duke seven to nothing. Give Rich Parsons a lot of credit. He had the key run, the option. 31 tackles. 31 yards, and there's the kick by Selikovic, and it sails out of the end zone. Now let's take a look at Doc's keys to the game. And the first one was to score first. Well, that didn't happen. Well, that's out. Yep. But there are other things that need yeah. to happen. Yeah, that is out. Load up against the run. And it, uh, that's out. And now special <laughs> teams have got to step up and make a big play. And all you can do is hope and see if that happens. But you've got to have an idea as we go to the Maryland Terrapins. Here's a group that's got to come out and just stay so focused. That's the one thing they've got to do is be focused. First and ten. Duke at their own 20. Once again, Chris Douglas has yet to touch the football. Hand off to Douglas. And not much running room there. And Charles Hill is the man who gets in and gets the first snare of the tackle. Now let's take a look at Maryland's keys, Doc. Well, forced a turnover. First and second down, they've got to get, you know, some passing success and crank up the crowd. Well, the crowd is cranked up. And uh, we're going to find out they didn't, they didn't have to throw in that first possession. And that defense sooner or later gets after you. Second down and seven. Charles Hill leads the defensive line and tackles. Blitz is on. Douglas gets away from it. And then again, Hill pulls him down for actually a loss to the 21. Well, now making 63 tackles for a loss for this defense. Coach Blackman did a great job in conveying the attitude 
to this group. Fundamentally sound. They apply pressure. They don't sit back and wait for things to happen. They force things to happen. They like to get in that zone blitz. They'll bring it on third down and long always. But sometimes when they bring it early, they can really get penetration on a play. It's third down now and nine. Bryant in an obvious passing situation. Throws complete to Erdeljack. First down for Duke at the 41-yard line. It's a gain on the play of 21 yards. That's what they have to do. Rod Littles took a shot at the interception. He missed it. He gambled. And that's, again, that's what this Maryland defense will do. But give credit where credit's due. Ball's right on the money. If Erlijak, if he does this in the opening possession, who knows? Maybe Duke scores. Then we get a chance to watch him. Now watch this sweet spot. Ball right there. Wow. He turns his shoulders upfield. Good, clean operation. Great camera work. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. Alex Wade is the setback, and he'll get the handoff. The tailback backing up Douglas, and he gets good yardage up over the 45-yard line. It's amazing what a little success in the air can do. It opens up something for you on the ground. It helps, but oh, Charles Hill, I mean, this guy's played, I mean, all everybody up front for Maryland has been worthy of honors but Charles Hill has probably been the most special that time he forced that play to bend back nearly had another tackle for loss instead it turns into a six-yard gain makes it second down and four him way to tailback Bryant to throw four-man rush steps up pass complete to Kyle Moore and he is in Maryland territory at the 43-yard line great patience D. Bryant didn't panic. You know, the inclination you think, well, do I run this? No, we'll let it develop. It's a lot easier on your body. A little X game up front by the Terrapins defensively. See, he stepped up. He saw a big number 42 in his face. That'll make you throw that football. E.J. Henderson. You look at Kyle Moore's numbers, five receptions on the year. Got to get more. Got to get more numbers. He's got three career touchdowns. First and ten. Pass to the flats and a miscommunication on the pattern. Passed intended for Landrum, that Centario Landrum, the redshirt freshman from Sweetwater, Alabama. Let's take a look at some of the Maryland superlatives on defense. This is the fewest allowed since 1980. They lead the ACC in rushing yards, turnover margin. That's the one there, brother. Oh, boy. 12, 14 in the last two, as a matter of fact. Last three games. That's what rattles your cage. Because it gives the offense an opportunity to score. Second down and 10. From the Maryland 44. With time, Bryant underthrows Hurdle Jack, but great coverage from Tony Jackson. One Boy, of the reasons he underthrew. T Jack is a monster. I mean, this kid, third on the team in tackles, seven hurries, a couple of forced fumbles, three interceptions, and he's such a presence in their blitz package. You know, he's big enough, he's 6'1, he's 205, and he's tough enough to be able to get inside that box and create havoc. Now, well, Doc, let's see on third and 10 what Gary Blackney, the uh, defensive coordinator for You Maryland, know what he's going to do. Let's see how many brings now. Pepper in the grits, baby. Coming at you. Oh, yeah, here's Henderson stepping up. Loading up. Here they come. They send one. Bryant, incomplete, intended for Wade. Ty Stewart. Another one of those unsung heroes in the secondary. This time they threatened Blitz and then backed up and gave me a zone look. They, they brought one. That was Whaley, it looked like. He looks awful nasty here. And then you see the backers drop. And you get three on one. You like those numbers. Three red shirts, one white shirt. In the punt formation from Maryland, 43-yard line. And this is Trey McDonald for his second kick of the day. Gary is back to receive. He'll be angling for a corner. Gets a lot of elevation on it. And a good kick. Yeah, good possession. There's a penalty flag, however. They might have gotten a little too close to Jillian Gary. That was still a good possession for Duke. There's Thomas Zamorski, our official. The referee getting yeah. ready to get the call. As it applies to field position. Yeah, they, yeah that hurts you. Be an extra five yards, but uh, we've got a timeout here on the field with 9.17 left to go in the first quarter. Sean Hill's touchdown's the only thing on the board. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Ralph 
region doesn't hide from the fans. Every Friday he has breakfast with the fridge. They had 350 Terrapin fans come to listen to him talk about Terrapin football. There's Friedgen's legions right there. First and 10 for Maryland at their own 14-yard line. Sean Hill has Bruce Perry as his lone setback, and here's his first pass of the game, and it is complete to Julian Gary, and it's good for about seven after the 21-yard line. Maryland marched down the field in 53 yards and five plays, all on the ground, their first possession. It's very important that on first down, they're able to throw the football with some effectiveness. Game of seven, second down and three. Here comes the option. Sean Hill turns the corner, has the first down, and one man to beat. Foot race with Ronnie Hamilton. And Hamilton gets there in time to stop him at the 21-yard line of Duke. Amazing. This kid is 221 pounds. Doesn't look like he'd be he'd hang out of the track, but he can go. He's a competitor. Forget about his 40 time. Focus on his heart. Now watch the option again. What you're looking for is an alleyway. And there it is. See? Now he got a lane there unobstructed. And that's the key. Couldn't hit him if you were playing tag. First and ten at the Bruce Perry, digging for about three yards inside the 20 at the 18. Well, we talk about wardrobe, Maryland in all red. Mike Hogwood tells us why. Well, they have a Terp Council, a 10 member of this team advising Coach Friedgen. And this game today, they felt was big. And to reinforce that, hey, it's not just Duke we're playing. We're playing for 7-0. They went to Coach Friedgen and said, let's wear all red. He said, okay, we'll go for it. He said it's been a very intense week, and he's done that by design. He doesn't want any slippage of this team against Duke. Here's Hill calling his own number inside the 15, down to the 11. And he's very close to a first down. He did five. Ralph told me before the ball game, if you look at the uh, the, the rushing numbers, wow. are, are just, I mean, that's sick. <laughs> that, that right there, folks, that's sick. What he told me was that, you know, we're wearing this red. And I told the kids, we'll do it, but you better win. <laughs> you know, we all be bad in that, so he put a little threatening mark to that. That's the second straight week we've seen a team change wardrobe. Of course, uh, Clemson going with the purple pants for the first time in their history, and they won. And Ralph Friedgen's got a firm hand on this program right now down to the wardrobe. First down and 10. They're inside the 12-yard line. Here's Bruce Perry. Explosive. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Maryland. Yeah, now that's a big-time short run. Elusiveness, power, and determination to get to the end zone. Now that's a big-time running back. Bruce Perry. 12-yard touchdown run, and for Perry this season, that's his eighth career touchdown run. And you've got to have a sense of urgency. When you get in the red area, and you get that ball in your belly, buddy, you have to explode through people. Nick Novak getting ready for the point after, out of a hold of Brooks Bernard. Maryland Terrapins look like they mean business today. So Bruce Perry from 12 yards out is eighth score of the year, and the Maryland Terrapins have rolled up a two-touchdown lead on their homecoming guest from Duke. 14-0, the Maryland Terrapins have a two-touchdown lead on the Duke Blue Devils. This scoring drive, another five-play march, this time 86 yards. Silicova gets ready to kick it off. Chris Douglas looking to return one today, but it will not be this time. Fans, jpsports.com has the coverage you want. No one knows the ACC like JP Sports, and we bring the information to you right there online. Tune in each week for previews of upcoming games, broadcast information, and lots of other exciting people. For the inside scoop, log on to jpsports.com. Steve Martin, Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood here, and there's Bruce Perry, who scored the game's second touchdown. Right now, Maryland with 132 yards on the ground. They're averaging... <laughs> 15 yards a carry in their first nine plays from scrimmage. D. Bryant out of the shotgun, first and 10 at the 20. Pass intercepted, Tony Jackson. First turnover of the day, and it sets Maryland up at the Duke 22. That's unfair. <laughs> it's just unfair to be that good all the way across the board defensively. I've been bragging on this kid. I mean, I, I'm crazy about Tony Jackson because he's a two-way player. 
physical against the run, and he'll show you here. See that? He read the eyes, stepped in, made the right catch with his hands, and then tried to make the highlights. Very impressive. Tony Jackson, and look at this turnover margin this season. Plus 15. <laughs> how about that? Yeah, that See, is those are numbers. Again, that's how you win. And they're in the red zone with this interception. First and 10 at the 22. No rest for Sean Hill. One play, and he's got it back again. Here comes the pitch to the corner. It's Rich Parson, and Parson hit once, and then finally went down at the nine. Roberts had a shot at him. Nate Quill and Terrell Smith have to clean it up at the nine-yard line. Well, this kid reminds me of my youth. Watch the balance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, real young. Time. No, I'm talking about like six months old, seven months old, <laughs> taking those first steps. <laughs> <laughs> Eight oh, yard man. gain to the 14. I said the nine earlier. Actually, a nine yard gain, second and one. Here's Lynch. Big dog. Lynch this touchdown, big dog. Maryland. He didn't start the game, but he finishes that drive from 12 yards out. Well, the 200 and a whole lot. Let's put him at 270 pounds. He can do just about anything he wants to do. Now, folks, this is one point where I don't want to be a linebacker. Not in this case. You know sooner or later, you got to feed the big dog. And here he comes, right up the middle, busting arm tackles. He finds the end zone. And Maryland is smoking. 20 to nothing, and it could be 21. And it is. As Nick Novak puts it through the uprights, and the Maryland Terrapins strike quickly. After the Tony Jackson interception, it only took them two plays, and James Lynch carried the mail from 14 yards out. Well, even the big dog can use a little help, and it's up front. Lamar Bryant that time, steamrolling up front. Watch the leg drive. I mean, it helped. Now, watch up front. See, there's the lane you're looking at. Now, watch this. He gets right through the hole, gives you a little cut, a little shake and bake by the big dog. <laughs> Man, they're having fun with it. And offensive football, when it's done right, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it really is. And not at anyone's expense. It's what you work for all week long. Six days of preparation so that plays work. And Carl, Carl knows. No, he knows because they had a big second half last week against Wake Forest. He had some experience. He experienced success on offense. It's nothing like it. Well, there's nothing like coming, trying to come back on this Maryland defense at the same time. We saw one of the ways you try to come back and fail. And Tony Jackson, of course, paid that off. Carl Franks looking at the list of plays that will be successful against the Maryland defense. There aren't many. See, the toughest part about this when you're trailing, and I've been there, is that you still have to have fun with the game. That's Don't right. press. You know, last week they started to have fun. They were down, and it worked. They scored 35 points in the second half. They there tied Wake Forest, lost 42-35. They've got a similar animal facing them right now. Silikovic's kick. This will be returned. Douglas gets a block and oh, Littles. Up over oh, 23. Goodness. Wow. I think oh. Littles was looking to knock the ball out. Looking to knock some filling out. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Well, after that last score, the first thing Ralph Friedgen did is he went over to the bench and he shook the hand of every offensive lineman out there and saying, great start, guys, great start. Bob Trott, the defensive coordinator for Duke, was only in the middle of his adjustments when that turnover happened a moment ago. But right now, this game in the trenches is no contest. The Maryland offensive line is getting such a great push that the Duke defense is really in a bit of trouble. There's a penalty out on the field. Apparently a roughing call after after the kickoff return, and that gives Duke some pretty good field position at their own 38-yard line. Steve, I just watched uh, number 32, Liar Joe, who's playing just crazy football at linebacker, limp off the field. That's not good news for Maryland. We'll get a report on that. Moore in motion. Handoff Douglas staggers in the backfield and runs into E.J. Henderson. Well, a loss of three. Werewolf. Yep. Henderson, the junior from Aberdeen, Maryland, the Buckus candidate, and he has been something. Look at what he's done for loss this season. 16 tackles for loss, two sacks. He's been unchained by this defensive scheme. 64 tackles for loss as a unit. I mean, it's just madness. Second down. Now they send two backers. The pass incomplete. Dropped by the tight end. 
Boy, hit daylight. Yeah, he did, boys. One of my favorite players in this conference is Mike Hart. And Mike Hart had real estate in front of him. That was his to make a big play. Uncharacteristic, man. You know, I love my tight ends. Here's a guy gets open, comes across real flat, and just didn't pick it up in time. Did not pick it up because he has excellent hands. And that's the byproduct. That's frustration. Yep. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation and the use of it without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Third down and 12 with Carl Franks wanted to avoid. They send one. Bryant with time, good protection pass complete to Erdeljack and he's got the first down at midfield. Good operation. Yeah, Erdeljack who one got away from him in the opening series but he bounced back. And now that was pressure. Everything going against you. You have to forget about the scoreboard when you're in this position and just take small victories, and that's first downs. Get enough of them, you end up in the end zone. And they're at midfield, actually a yard into Maryland territory at the 49. Sharp and Erdeljack to the wide side. Reggie Love to the short side. The handoff, Alex Wade, who's been their best offensive threat on the ground thus far this afternoon. And he gets about three yards up to about the 46-yard line. As we look at some scores from around the country, we're starting an hour later this afternoon, and North Carolina is stunning Clemson. 21 to 3. Is Maryland happy they face those guys in early September? Everybody better be. I mean, that defense we knew was stellar. Now the offense is clicking. And Kentucky leading Georgia by a field goal down at Athens, and that's a surprise, too. Raise your eyebrows. Second down and eight. Duke down three touchdowns. Handoff, Douglas, good hole, and Henderson shuts it down, though, after only a yard game. As we look at the ACC standings, this is the turf that Maryland wants to protect. North Carolina, of course, three and one. Clemson with one loss. Florida State with one loss in conference. Of course, Florida State with a big game tonight against Virginia, and Georgia Tech and NC State play. Nothing like balance. And you've got a fantastic season in the ACC because of the parity. A lot of great players on both sides of the ball. Coaching changes. Everything seems to work out so far. So well, so good. Third down and six. Duke in Maryland territory at the 45. The blitz is on. The pass to the oh, flash. Call. Great to call. And Douglas has the first down. O'Connellon, played by the flu much of the week, knocks him out at the 25-yard line. But it's a nice gain of 19 on the play. Great call. That's what I'm talking about. Carl Franks and them, I mean, they have a plan. Trust me, they have a plan. They've just been their own worst enemy of late, evident in this ball game. But, but they have some talent. And this young man here is the best of the lot. Actually stepped out of bounds, maybe two yards shy of where he was tackled at the 28-yard line. Duke with their deepest penetration of the day. Bryant. Draw play Douglas, and Douglas surprises the Maryland defense as he gets down close to another first down inside the 20. At the 19 yard very line. Very nice, very nice. Duke won't quit. So get that in your mind right now and understand that they will not quit. They make some mistakes, but if they can just avoid, avoid that, and you look at Douglas, you see the numbers. Here, he's got to have more of that. He can't get the ball in his hands enough. But that offensive line now is starting to compete. Second down and one. Wade in the backfield. He gets the call, and he's close to the first down. If they give him a spot, he might have it. Making the tackle there is E.J. Guess who? Guess who? Yeah. He's in on it a lot. Let's go to Mike Hogwood. Well, Leon Joe had to leave the game earlier. He's back in now. Somebody simply stepped on him. Foot's a little sore, but not enough to keep him out of this lineup. Well, they got another guy, Marlon Moye Moore, who comes back to the lineup now, and he can back Leon Joe up. And uh, Moye Moore has a lot of experience in this program. And they rotate the defensive line. Randy Starks, the freshman, has been just been brilliant. And he gets a lot of time in there. So they, that, that gives him balance in that front seven. Joe, the sophomore from Clinton, Maryland. And it is good enough for the first down as Wade makes the 18-yard line. A reminder, at halftime, we'll be taking a look at the all-tell halftime stats. And uh, right now, they're heavily skewed in Maryland's favor. But Duke trying to offset that. Get a score now. And then you can get back to your plan. I mean, it, you really don't have to panic at that point. Every team in the ACC changed offensive coordinators. The only one who stayed on his job, Paul Franks, who's also the head coach of the Duke Blue Devils. First and 10 from the 18. Wade 
takes the handoff, steps inside right guard, and gets down inside the 15 to the 13, making the tackle Randell Jackson. Well, Alex Wade is not shy, and I like it the fact that once the ball's in his belly, he hits full speed. I mean, this kid, he runs through, through arm tackles. That time he broke a pretty good tackle by Randy Starks. Second down and about six to go. Make it five. You can win with 3.8 a touch. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can win with that. Get three of those, you get another first down. Hey. <laughs> you like my math? Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Here's Bryant. Pass complete. It's the backup tight end this time. It's Nick Brzezinski yeah. from Livonia, Michigan. He's a sophomore, and he's got enough to keep the chains moving. You can count on them. Believe me, Mike Hart will come back, and he'll make a play. See, a little play action. Because they had some success running with Wade, play action work. Nice little drag route. Good operation by Duke. So Brzezinski gets the six-yard catch. Good enough for a first down. We'll see what he's done. He's scored thus far this season. Duke now knocking on the door. They're first and goal. Checks off as E.J. Henderson plays a few games with him, and he blitzes. Hot pass to the corner. The ball is incomplete. And it. Denard Wilson is over there in coverage. But that was a definite check off to a hot pass. No doubt about it. I mean, they, Maryland's whole deal is to force you out of what you want to do. And it's a nice to watch the pass set. I'd like to see his feet set a little bit better, but the ball's right on his, right on his hands. Got to make that play. You're trailing, you're in enemy territory, you're trying to get a win. Great call by Carl Franks. Execution was there, make the catch. Inside the 20, nine touchdowns and 13 possessions. Second down and goal from the seven. Play fake. Anderson passes complete for a touchdown to Brzezinski. Well, that was stealing there. That was stealing. Love great play action. I mean, you earn play action. You don't just throw it out. You have to earn the right to be effective in play action. Now watch this. See the movement? A little bit of movement. You see no red shirts. Where the red shirts? They are out of there because they're so aggressive. They get to the ball, and they believe in the run. Great call. Great execution. Here comes Garber with a kick after. Brent Garber with a point after touchdown. And the Duke Blue Devils are on the board. as They just forget what the score is and just drive the ball down the field from their own 38-yard line. Let's look at the pass yeah. again. See, good looking. There's 42. He's out of the way. See, that void there. That void there. There's no red shirts. That's stealing. And then you look up. Wilson got it. They got us. You have, to, you have to execute, but you also, that time, that was a little nifty. That's Brzezinski's second touchdown catch of the year, and it is the fifth touchdown pass from the arm of D. Bryant. If you look at Brzezinski walking the sidelines with Sean Lynch in front of him. The uh, best athletes on the field. <laughs> There's D. Bryant. It's 21 to 7. And a lot of scoring here in this first quarter. 28 points between these two blue teams. And a well orchestrated march by the Duke Blue Devils. Well, we've only had the one here. And we had the interception on that. Uh, Tony Jones, Tony Jackson, rather, comes up with an interception. Other than that, he had a couple drops on Duke's side. But now they're over that. That was an outstanding drive. And the passing game came on track for the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, some key catches downfield. Ertle Jack for 14. Another one. Little first down, give and go. Uh, Chris Douglas that got him 19 yards downfield. And two passes to the tight end inside the 20. Got him into the end zone on a 12-play march. Here's Rich Parson, the true freshman, waiting for the kick. And 40,000 at homecoming. And a silent now as uh, Duke has put them back down in their seats. There's the scoring drive. 12 plays, 62 yards. Brzezinski, the seven-yard catch from D. Bryant. Barber's kick. Parson. About three yards deep in the end zone coming out. Nice hold in the middle and tripped up. Be glad he tripped. B.J. Hill got him. Otherwise, he was gone. Down. Over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, strike the band up. <laughs> <laughs> he was headed downfield. There's Rich Parson. He, he is he's special. How do you keep him out, out of the lineup? You, you can't. You Got to get the ball in his hands. First and 10, Maryland at their own 29-yard line. Well, they've tried to find a variety of ways to do it. He hit a 34-yard gain first time he touched the ball. This is a statement drive now. 
Pass to the flats complete. This is Mark Riley backing up Bruce Perry. And Ryan Fowler brings him down at the 32-yard line. Coming up next week, we go to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, back down on Tobacco Road, and it should be quite a battle as the Clemson Tigers, Woodrow Dantzler, come to town, the two-headed quarterback monster for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, and they're playing well this season. Uh, I'm excited about the next week. This should be a great ball game, and we'll have it for you from Grove Stadium beginning at 12 noon on many of these Jefferson Pilot Sports Stations as Sitco presents ACC football. Hill on the option, it's to Riley. And Riley met at the line of scrimmage. Josh Kreider would not give up on that play. And it's a two-yard gain for Merrill. Enthusiasm is infectious. You get a score, this defense was just looking for something to get, get crazy about. Nate Creel with a good pressure on the pitch. And all of a sudden now, Duke is tackling back. It's a two-yard gain. It sets... Uh, Maryland up and third down and three. They've been to third down not very often this afternoon. Riley getting a turn there. There's Monroe in motion. He'll throw. It is Scooter Monroe. And he is complete in Duke territory at the 49-yard line. A 15-yard gain that time by Monroe. Well, I'd love to be in film studies and watch this one. Watch the offensive line now. I want you to keep your eye on all the action going to the left. Now watch. String of pearls. Everybody there, they're in concert. Pad on pad. You just open up a great opportunity for your quarterback. First and 10 in Duke territory at the 49. Maryland up 21-7. Play action for Hill. And wide open. The tight end. Matt Murphy. The 6-5 senior out of New Haven, Michigan. His third pass reception of the season. And it's for nice yardage down inside the 15-yard line. Going to another great athlete. Once again, wear white shirts. Nobody's there. Nobody's there in the frame. Perfect time. Ball in the air. Great catch by a super athlete. And steal it. 34 yards downfield. First and 10 from the 15. Here's Riley. Riley gives you a bigger profile and pulls his way inside the five. Hamilton tripped him up. And the quarter has come to an end with Maryland knocking on the door once more. Mark Riley at 6'3", 218. Sean Hill has been one of the heroes, the Maryland Terrapins, with their defense in play as well. They lead 21-7 through one at College Park. A penalty erased the game by Mark Roddy down to the three. That put uh, the quarter still in force. And, of course, the last play of the quarter was this one. Back to the 20-yard line. Hill, nice out there to Jafar Williams. And Jafar taken out down there in uh, Duke territory at the 15. And so the quarter officially comes to an end. It can't end on a penalty. And that's what we had, a 10-yard holding penalty against Maryland denied them position at the two, and now they've got to go at it again, but they're down there to the 15. Look at the top 25 AP teams, and you'll see Maryland with their highest marking since 1985 in the 12th mark, Clemson in 13th, Florida State, Georgia Tech, all in the top 25. It's a good week for the ACC. Yeah, that's very, very impressive. Steve Martin here along with Doc Walker and Mike Hogwood. Welcome back to Bird Stadium as Sitko presents ACC football. Maryland Terrapins, their last title was the last time they were this successful, 1985. And they're looking to build on that success of the first team in the country to become bowl eligible, one of the first. Second down now, and 10, as that last play by Jafar Williams got them back to the original line of scrimmage after the hole. Back to throw Hill. Quick drop, pass complete, and it's Rich Parson inside the 10 down to the six-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain on the play. We talk so much about how a quarterback reads his progression. But that young man had a chance to look at three different options on that one play and pick the right option. And he can't be much better than six to six, but I was really impressed with how he was able to check his options and go to the open receiver. At the Duke six-yard line where it's third down and one. Maryland up 21 to seven. Spindler in motion. The handoff goes to Riley. And Riley breaks one tackle, but Terrell Smith and Charles Porter and Josh Kreider make sure he goes no farther. He's got the first down, however. 
Body is different uh, dimension than pair. Watch the steamrollers right here. Watch that surge. You see that surge? Buddy, that's four yards right there. You untouched. Boy, that's, that's getting it done. Crawford, Bryant, Fowler on that right side. First and goal from the four. Hill has time. He's got his tight end. Dugan for the touchdown. Yeah, this is too much. Dugan, Murphy, Hart, Brzezinski. These four super athletes all in one game. I don't know if I'll be able to handle this for an entire game. Tight end deluxe. <laughs> and our second touchdown by a tight end. This one in a Maryland uniform. And Jeff Dugan scores for the first time this season on only his fourth pass reception of the year. When you have a power game, then you can add deception. And you catch people off guard. Great throw on a run, super catch, good operation for the tournament. Novak getting a lot of practice this afternoon, and he splits the uprights for the fourth time today. The Maryland Terrapins extend their lead to 21. Second touchdown pass of the day for Sean Hill as Hill... Hits his tight end, Jeff Dugan, in the end zone. And with 14.01 left in the second, it's Maryland by 21. Around the league is presented by Geico Direct. Last year in Chapel Hill, Woodrow danced the left the game with an injury. And freshman Wood, uh, Willie Simmons threw four touchdowns as the Tigers beat the Tar Heels 38-24. Homecoming in Death Valley today as North Carolina comes calling. Another action today, Georgia Tech hosting NC State. Florida State and Virginia tonight. And they face off in Charlottesville. And the early returns from Death Valley show Carolina at last report up 21 to 3. Regions Legions are happy because Maryland is up 28 to 7. A minute into the second quarter, and Sean Hill is struck through the air on an eight-play march. Hill with his first touchdown pass of the day. He's run one in for a score, and he was perfect on that drive. Dugan, the tight end, catching a seven-yarder, but Hill was seven or six for six at 79 yards. So Hill having a good day. Here's the kick by Silicovic, and it comes down now to Douglas at the four. Chris Douglas bounces outside, and he's driven out by Littles, Rod Littles at the 25-yard line. As we take a look at your first quarter stats, and look what Maryland has chalked up on the ground, Doc. Yeah, that's sick. 163 yards the hard way. Of course, they came back that time with really what you have to call a statement drive. Yeah, yeah, and I believe that. When 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 your team is scored on, you go out on that offense, you get that kickoff return. If you go back and put points on the board, you completely take the momentum and put it back in your uniform. So I really believe that was a strong statement. Now, Ralph Friedgen out there on the field, as apparently we've had a penalty marched off here. Encroachment by the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Re-kick. So Duke wants him to kick it again. And uh, second penalty by Maryland here in the last possession. Paul Franks wants Chris Douglas to have a little more running room and a little more time to get one back. Yeah, make 11 guys sprint down 55 yards. Make them do it again, and I guarantee you I'll, I'll take Douglas. And look what Duke did. First three possessions, 36 yards and an interception. But the last time they had the football, they drove 62 yards for a score. It was only one time they were taken out of what they wanted to do since they've had the ball. They had drops and an and interception, right. and then a great drive, and then once they were, they were captured on third down. So Duke is just stick with your plan and then find a way to stop the Terrapins yeah. <laughs> offensively. Especially on the ground. That's where they've chewed up some yardage. Silikovic getting ready for the kick. This time it'll be Kyle Moore. And Maryland, they have it. Curtis Williams off the chest of Kyle Moore. And that's what Carl didn't have that plan when he decided to go for another kick. And again, Chris Douglas wasn't in the ball game. Kyle Moore has returned. He's averaged 24 yards a return. But this is suicidal. You just cannot allow this to happen. When you're the visiting team, you can't. It's not, it'll hurt you at home, but you're in a hostile environment. You can't give up the football. And Maryland comes out oven ready, so to speak. Sean Hill waiting for the Duke defense to take its place on the field. First and 10 from the Duke 18. Second turnover of the afternoon. And Maryland's in the red zone again. Hill throws complete to the tight end Murphy down in. 
inside to the two-yard line. 16-yard gain on the first play from scrimmage to tackle Ronnie Hamilton. Virtually unstoppable. If you want the honest truth about it, when you're 6'5", you're 255, and you have play action on your side, and a quarterback that can make the tough throw, I miss. Mean, that's, that's good catch. Good catch. Nate Krill gets a shot in there at Sean Hill. Well, that's Sean's first contact of the afternoon. First and goal from the two. And off goes to Riley. He's close. I don't think so. Right on the line. Ryder and Hamilton help drive him back. No quit by Duke. And this is the second straight series where Riley's been the featured back. Gets it down inside the one. Second and goal. 6-3, 2-18. You talk about a contrast of style. Oh, yeah. Bruce Perry. At the half, North Carolina stunning Clemson at homecoming. Second down and goal. We've got another score on the horizon here for Maryland. Here comes a handoff. Riley up over the pile. Touchdown, Maryland. Talked about this young man's size is 6'3", 218, but he also has some ups. Body over the pile for six. And Maryland getting business done this afternoon at homecoming, up 34 to seven. One yard touchdown run. That's Riley's first of the day. Novak with the kick. Mark Wiley up over the pile for his fifth touchdown of the year. Watch it here as Maryland pushes their margin. 35-7 will return after these messages from your local ACC station. What's the worry? Welcome back to College Park. A sunny day in Maryland and the fans are really enjoying their home team as Mark Riley puts a punctuation mark there has gotten it done in the first half of their games this season, 138 to 37 and 35-7 here. Here's Chris Douglas. He returns the kick this time, driven out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Andrew Henley, backup linebacker, comes up for the tackle for the Maryland Terrapins. So the hill is a little bit higher that Duke has to climb over now, thanks to their turnover on the kickoff return and there's D. Bryant down 35-7. We try to emphasize the importance in holding on to the ball for Duke. Now that it's happened, you got to make up for it with big plays. Both turnovers, the interception and the fumble of the kickoff return have led directly to Maryland scores. Bryant back to throw first down. Still behind the line. Fires deep. Has Erdl Jack there. Patience and what discipline by Bryant yeah. to stay behind the line. Hey, I panicked. I'm up here with nobody chasing me. <laughs> I thought, man, you got to get rid of this ball. Great offensive line work up front. Those guys gave him a chance. He makes a good decision here. Man, Earl Jack, that's nice. This is Earl Jack, but this guy can make play for him. 36 yards on that play to Earl Jack, and it's first to 10. Duke at the Maryland 48. Nice cut inside. And E.J. Henderson and Mike Whaley bring him down, but it's at the 43-yard line. It'll be a gain of five. Let's go to Mike Hogwood on the sideline. Well, one player not in is Tony O'Connell. He's having a great season, five interceptions, but he got hit in the head. And uh, he's not feeling real good. They don't want to take any chances at all, not with the score 35-7. to seven. He may have seen his last action today. O'Connell has been battling the flu. Yeah, always. the flu always. It's tough. You get, you get your bell wrong. Yeah. Well, he's a good one. Five interceptions, third in the NCAA, and first in the ACC. Perseverance. Perseverance. There's Bryant. Second down and five. Pass incomplete. It's intended over there for number 82. That's Lance Johnson. So that brings up third down and six. We talked about you didn't want to be in that situation. No. 
Well, Ertel Jack has been a pretty good receiver for him this afternoon. He's caught a couple of big balls. Three, in fact. Big third down play for the Blue Devils, down 35 7. No blitz this time for Maryland. Pass complete. And that is Sharp. Kari Sharp gets the completion. That's his ninth reception of the year. He's a redshirt freshman from Voorhees, New Jersey. Well, it's easy to see why the staff is so high on D. Bryant. I mean, this kid, he's been banged up, but he has poise, puts the ball right on the money, and that offensive line is highly impressive. We've seen Maryland dog people with their pass rush. Here's Duke in the red zone again. Alex Wade after the 47-yard hookup to Sharp, and he gets five more yards, hard-fought yards down to the 10-yard line. Can't win, can't be successful unless you have some real players on your side. And Duke has it, 37. Alex Wade is one of those guys. I mean, you can win with him. D. Bryant is showing these guys will compete. Sharp, we talked about Earl of Jack, two tight ends. They just got to put it together. Wade for seven. Second down and three. Blitz coming out. Joe gets a piece of Bryant. Bryant to the end zone and gets rid of the football in time. Leon Joe all over D. Bryant. Well, there's a quarterback to spend some time in the weight room. For you young quarterbacks that don't think you have to drive a little iron. <laughs> See that straight arm? A little, little power. Yeah. Held off Leon Joe just enough time so he could throw it out and uh, resist the sap. Third down and three here for Duke. Paul Frank sends the play in. And Reggie Love, who also walked on the basketball team this year to the top side. Sharp and Ertle Jack to the wide side of the field. There's the blitz by Henderson. Pass oh, incomplete. Goodness. Oh, Jackson almost had his second pick of the day, intended for Kari Sharp. Ball hawk. This kid is so good. He's something. He's had to battle injuries, too, Doc, in his career, but look at the play he makes here. Well, you know, when you're trying to read the eyes of the quarterback, you know, and he understands set and formation and nearly had his second interception on the day. Field goal attempt coming up here for Duke. Brent Garber. This will be a 28-yard kick out of Trey McDonald's hole, and it is good. So the Blue Devils do not waste a journey into the red zone as they score on the 28-yard kick by Brent Garber, his third field goal of the season. And the Blue Devils trail here 35-10 to 10 with 10.26 left to go in the second quarter after this timeout. Welcome back to College Park as Duke is set to kick off after a nice eight-play march of 73 yards capped by a Brent Garber field goal. 28 yards. It's a stay focused no matter what the circumstance drives. This will be Rich Parson. He'll take this one seven yards deep and will not come out. So Duke a little full of themselves after driving for their second, second score of the day. And let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. I feel, still think we got a lot of playing to come before halftime, but when we get there, we're going to have scores and highlights for you. Our, play, our player of the week, we're going to hear from both coaches about this incredible first half. The Maryland coaches, they've been saying, stay after them, stay after them. That's the word here on the Maryland sideline. Well, Maryland will start at their own 20. Terrapins have been reminded often by Ralph Regent of what happened two years ago. Well, the Blue Devils have got to step this thing up, man, and make some plays. Here's Hill on the option, and Hill going for more big yardage. He had a 57-yard gain in the first quarter. This one gets him out to the 45-yard line, another 25. Well, they're not listening to me. <laughs> but especially with the quarterback, I'd like to take my shots on the QB. But now the quarterback, I mean, he's taking shots on them. Hill so far today, total offense, 185 yards. He's got 88 yards down on the ground now in four runs today. That's an incredible average of 22. And the pass is incomplete, intended for Gary. Ronnie Hamilton is in on the play, covering defensively. There's Julian Gary, leading receiver for the Terrapins thus far this season, with 28 catches coming in for three touchdowns. Now, Julian's been real good for him. I mean, he's a, he's a great leader for this team. 
This is Hill. This is Hill <laughs> That's on not the bad. day. That's it's not, not bad. bad. And he was tough on himself. That's eight for nine now. That's his first miss of the afternoon. Here's Hill. Pass to the flats to Bruce Perry. He's nice back in. And Perry doing a Marshall Falk imitation. You crowned him with that a couple of weeks ago against Virginia. Oh, yeah. And he gets down to the Duke 43. I don't just throw that out. No. Love Matt Crawford, too. One of my big boys at tackle. Now, see, they get a little timing right. Then you see Brian. They come out and watch the contact right there. The big boy just engulfs the defender. And all you got to do is give Perry just a little bit of room. He'll make something big happen. First and ten. At the 43-yard line of Duke. Play fake for Hill. It's been very effective. Back to the tight end. Duke, who scored once today. B.J. Hill drives him out of bounds at the 26-yard line of Duke. And it's going to be a 17-yard game. And what can I say? I know what you're going to say. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, just... You I'm love the tight end. But these guys do a lot of blocking. They don't often get the ball thrown to them a lot, but they're capable of it. And it just makes your offense go. So Hill connects on two straight passes. Has first and 10 at the 26. Calls his own number. That might have been a busted play, but he still makes it work for about three yards. Charles Porter is in on the tackle. You know what? Hill's got some pretty good size to him. Oh, he does. Big man, 221 pounds. I watch these offense, watch the offensive linemen on really on both sides of the ball. I just like to take them all out for a big dinner, just watch them eat. And then pass <laughs> that check to our producer, Scott Snyder. <laughs> let him cover it. <laughs> oh. Be working a few extra Sundays for that one. I think it'd be good for the kids. Yeah. Second down and seven. <laughs> John Hill. Back to throw. Has a man open. That was Perry. And coming over to cover is Anthony Roberts. Anthony did a real good job on that. He read it well. Kind of baited Sean right into this throw. There you see 42. Anthony Roberts. Sean kind of kept his eyes on it. Well, that's a play you want to make that. Would have been a very difficult catch. But they've got to make these kind of plays. Sophomore from Henrik Osano, North Carolina, who had an interception return for a touchdown against Wake last week. Here's Maryland. Seldom on third down, but successful both times. And make it three. So what do you do? Go to the tight end. There you go. Uh -huh. Down to the 13-yard line. And it's a 10-yard game. Incredible how high a percentage you're working with. Like 98% success rate first and 10 at the Duke 13 yard line and Maryland is threatening again to push into the 40s for Williams Julian Gary the wide outs here's Hill the pitch to Perry and Roberts knocks him out of bounds he stepped out at the 10 okay, guys. it's a gain of about three well, you know, there's another player by uh, with the number 88 who played pretty well, not too far from here. RFK. I know you know him very well. Well, yeah. You know, it's just, <laughs> when I see those two eights out, I see these these guys. I'm really happy for them because both of the offensive units do employ the tight end, and they've done a great job. With it. Here's Perry tackled in the backfield. And Sean Johnson with a nice tackle from behind. That's what Duke needs. There's, there's Matt Murphy. Now, those are the numbers that count. Did you have these kind of numbers down there? Yeah, I had for career. It was career numbers. <laughs> yeah. But you just got to get them any way you can. You know, you, you get a hold of them. You know, our producer led you into that. Well, track. it's about winning, though. I mean, <laughs> these kids, if they catch 9 or 10, it's about wins. And then that's where Maryland, you have to like what they do. Third down and seven from the 10. They need the three. Hill, longest third down approach of the day. The pass to Perry, complete. And he's got the first down inside the one. Man. He knew he'd be hit. You talk about a courage. It takes a lot of courage to make this catch. Anybody that's ever played the game in the backfield, you know what I'm talking about. This swing here, this is a rib cage hit. And he knew it would come. Super hands, great effort. Knew as soon as he had to reach down for that football, Lynch is the fullback. Mark Riley comes in, and Hill will try to push it in from the one. Put it on Fowler. Melvin Fowler, of course, the center. Touchdown. Sean Hill's second of the day. 
Late call from the linesman puts it into the end zone for the Maryland Terrapins. Big Melvin in the middle. Melvin's quite a story. He's a great kid. Fifth year senior out of Wheatley Heights, New York. Now look what he had to what he had to endure. So close, and they could never get over the hump. Here's the point after by Nick Novak, and it is good. And that's his seventh kick after touchdown this afternoon. Sixth, actually, as uh, Novak makes it 42 to 10 with 6.50 left to go. As Sitko presents ACC football here from College Park in Maryland. Eleven plays, 80 yards. And, of course, Ralph Friedgen. In his wildest dreams, Ralph Friedgen couldn't have imagined his tenure at University of Maryland would begin in this fashion. Tremendous excitement uh, in this program at where we're at right now. Um, I think we have to realize that it's only six games. We have, you know, five more games to go. We're only at the halfway point. So, you know, I'm trying to keep my feet on the ground and stay very focused. Now that focus has to maintain. This is a dangerous game for Maryland, and he knew it coming in. He wanted them to be very intense in practice this week. Region's legions have got him going, but this is a saddle game, a big game last week against Georgia Tech, and next week looming on the schedule is the showdown they've wanted to test themselves against all season long Florida State. I talked to my, I would rather have, have Florida State now. Yeah. Have to t get the kids into that. This was a scary game so far. He's done a great job along with his staff in preparation. But look at Troy State. They beat Mississippi State. So they're, they're, it's no, all scary. They're just, no, they're, I mean, they're it's no all easy scary. games. And, and look what happened last night to Fresno. Well, you got to go to Carter Finley. Yep. I mean, that's, that's tough. Clemson here is tough. Troy State, we've talked about them, of course, the Seminoles. So no cakewalk. But no. It, it shouldn't be easy. No. But they can do it. I mean, that's the thing about it. They believe it. They can do it. We're making believers out of everybody this afternoon. Here's Douglas on the bounce. And Douglas gets bounced around as he crosses the 20. Tackle made in on the play by Kevin Eli, among others. It's a 12-yard return. There's more of what's happening around the country. They're just underway in the third quarter at Death Valley, North Carolina, 21-3. John Bunting's team played three top six teams in the first four weeks. Watch number seven. This is why it takes tremendous courage oh. to be on team. Oh. <laughs> Oh, what a hit. First and 10. Duke on their own 23 out of the shotgun. 42 to 10 our score. Bryant with time. Let's it go downfield. And he had Douglas. Yeah, great read. Yep. Douglas came open a little late. E.J. Henderson in the middle. They got tangled up. And D. Bryant was it was had enough guts to wait in there, take a hit and <laughs> read it. So from the 23, they start again on second down and 10. And there's E.J. Henderson. Now he's a pro. He's a pro. He's something. He can just might as well go ahead and book his day timer down the road to block Sundays off. He'll be working. He's got another year to go. Oh, I know. I said down the road. He'll Seven, be working. 78 tackles so far coming into this game today. Second down and 10. The Duke Blue Devils in their own 23. The pitch out to Wade. Wade turns the corner and it shuts down, but not before he's got another five yards. Aaron Thompson delivered the first hit and Durant Roundtree. And good also Charles Hill getting up. A good piece of blocking up front. Maryland is not a team they're not very easy to get around the corner on. Most defensive units that are exceptional don't give up that outside shoulder. It's very tough to beat on the perimeter. It's third down and five. Hurdle Jack has been his most reliable receiver of the afternoon. Three catches already. We might look for him here. Draw play instead. Alex Wade, and Wade's got the first down. Yeah, nice play. That's a good call. Good call. Rod Little leads the charge on the tackle, along with Ty Stewart. But a good call. That's right. It's tough for the officials, too. Don't think anybody gets away with it. I mean, oh. that, that's brutal. That is brutal. See, that, I'd have pads on. I've always said, 
I'd have on some short pads, some shoulder pads, and definitely would have on some headgear. <laughs> and if I took that, I'd come back with an arm pad on. Well, they do that in the end. Delivered a blow. There's Bryant, steps up in the pocket nicely, pass to Sharp complete. And he's marked out at the 44-yard line. That's a very difficult throw. Yes, it is. And he knew where his people were, and they give it the, they were there. And that's the most important thing. Pass pro again. I mean, you can't ask for any more than that. That's outstanding pass pro. Ball on the money. Duke can do this. They've got to get some help from their defense. Need to make a play on teams and just continue to hold the ball and end up and, and score. Second down and two. Eight-yard gain on that first down play to Harry Sharp. Trying to move the ball upfield with some success. Pass for the picked off. And that is Denard Wilson picking it off. The third turnover of the day, and Maryland will pick it up. Wilson's first interception of the year. That's a no no. It's all about numbers. You look in the area, you see three guys with red shirts, one guy with a white shirt. It's probably a bad area to throw the football. <laughs> now, we can step in his shoes for a moment. You see, you look over there, I don't like the numbers, see? And I can just, your peripheral vision has got to be able to pick that up. Bad decision. First and 10, Maryland to midfield. Jason Crawford is in the backfield now. Hill going upstairs quickly to the run. But it's a gain down to the 12-yard line. Knockout punch. Some teams don't have killer instinct. Maryland does. You come out following the turnover, play action, defense a little discouraged, beautifully thrown ball. Good catch. 35 yards downfield to Scooter Monroe. That's his second catch of the afternoon. Your nickname Scooter, man. You, you have to be quick. Here's Lynch. All 261 pounds of him. He scored today. He's up to the 11-yard line. First and 10. That, that name indicates quickness. Well, yeah, it should. Turnovers, of course. Big key to Maryland's success. The defense has forced 14 in the last three weeks. They already have three this afternoon. They're just counting. And they've scored off the previous two. And they're in the red zone again. Here's Sean Hill from the 12. No, numbers aren't there. No, good decision. Good pursuit by Duke and the tackle by Ryan Fowler and Nate Grill. As they gang up. There's Ryan Fowler. He leads Duke in tackles thus far this season. And he is 13.8 uh, tackles a game. That's good, but yet it's bad. Means the defense has been out there a lot. You can always count on Ryan. And this is what every coordinator wants. Every drive is success. Now, Charlie Tapp, they'll find a way to be upset about something. <laughs> you know, they'll find, well, this didn't quite go well. I want to hear them explain that. Third down and eight. Sean Hill sets up business at the 13. Pass is oh, no. almost picked off. Did he come yeah. down with it? Yes. He got it. He got it. And uh, did he carry it into the end zone? That's Kenneth Stanford picking off the pass. His first interception of the season. Stanford's a redshirt freshman from Detroit, Michigan. I mean, they have no reason in the world to be as sharp as they are right now if you just look at the scoreboard. But they don't quit. It's a good read. I mean, it's ill-advised throw. Don't make no mistake about that. But it's good to go in and cash in on it if you do. That's a gimme. And he got into the end zone, so that means it comes out to the 20. And there's Sean Hill. He was very disappointed in himself last week. He's been very efficient this afternoon, and that's his first big mistake of the day. Well, they experienced. They got out of that formula. Boy, a more comes in at the backup linebacker spot to Leon Joe and makes a nice tackle on Chris Douglas. And yeah, then you bring the Terminators in the game. Yeah. And you say, go get the ball back. <laughs> These guys. And that, I like what Maryland attempted to do. They need to work on their pass offense. So they went out and got a little footloose and fancy free for a moment. And it shows you they got to do a lot more work in that area. Second down and 12 on the loss of two. to throw four-man rush 
Pass complete over the middle to Chris Douglas out to the 25. It'll be a gain of about seven on the play. With 2.44 remaining, we've got a timeout here on the field called by Maryland. Terrapin's not leaving anything to chance here. What a chance to get another possession before the first half ends. Well, minus the mistakes that Duke has made offensively, they've shown us an ability to conduct a long drive. And what they need to do now is chew up this clock, get, get a score, and get out of here at halftime. Well, they've had two long drives. One resulted in a field goal. The other in a touchdown to the tight end, Nick Brzezinski. It's Carl Franks talking things over with D. Bryant, who's been bothered by leg injuries thus far this season. They haven't really been able to show him as a runner. And there's Maryland, 42 points, the most and a half since 1984. And in the early 80s, Bobby Ross was coach here, and that man was his offensive coordinator. Maryland was a dominant force in the ACC. Yeah, those, those were some good times uh, as a resident uh, here in the nation's capital. Man, I, was, I felt it. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hawkwood. Yeah, you know, Ralph Friedgen wasn't that disappointed in Sean Hill with that pass that he threw it to the right spot. The receiver was not in the right spot. Gary, and by the way, guys, 42 points on the board. Last time Maryland scored 42 points and a half, that great comeback against Miami in 1984. Frank Reich led that comeback that day. Yeah, that was a big one. That was huge. Blitz coming now. Bryant back looking like he wants to throw the screen, but instead he'll take the sack down to the five-yard line. Charles Hill pursues him. E.J. Henderson, Aaron Thompson. It was a jailbreak at D. Bryant's doorstep. Well, they put those linebackers after you. I mean, their front four gives you a great push. But when they send those pit bulls, then you're in a world of trouble. And again, Hill, I like this kid. He's a good one. I like him. I like him a lot. Charles Hill has been a consistent player all season long. But this one's coming back. Against the defense, five-yard penalty. Thomas Zamorski making the call, and it's an offsides penalty against Maryland, so it saves Duke the sack. The big fellas, that's too much running that, that, to not get any credit for it. Stay tuned. Coming up at halftime, we'll be highlighting the best in the ACC, presented by Don Pablos. Quick count. And the play doesn't go very far. Gets up over the, but it gets enough for the first down. Or very close to it. Let's see. As Duke came up and said, hey, it's third and one. We're going to take advantage of it. So they get the first down. Out to the 31-yard line. And the best thing they can do now is give the defense a break. Let them get in at halftime, get some of the oranges, and some replenish the fluids, and get, a, get your game plan going and come back and fight. They scored 35 points and a half against Wake last week. Last week, Came up seven point shot. Here's Bryant, hands off, now to Wade, and Wade gets some running room. And he's been their most effective weapon on the ground today. It's a gain of 14 yards out to the 46 yard line. Alex is a beast. 250, six foot. And again, what I like most about this kid is the moment that ball is snapped, he can get from zero to 60 in a minute. I mean, he's popping out at you. He's full speed ahead by the time he breaks the line of scrimmage. Only 20 carries, Doc, prior to today. Today he's got eight yards, eight carries, 46 yards. Here's Bryant to throw, and it is almost picked off. Tony Jackson nearly got another one, intended for Reggie Love. And we take a look again. You are the quarterback. Again, second option. And that was, man, that's just tough throw. You're trying to throw in the middle. Again, do the number count. Three red shirts, one white shirt. Bad decision. Second down and 10. Minute 39 left to go in this first half. There's Wade on the draw, but this time Aaron Thompson wouldn't buy it. And he barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Thompson leading the charge. He's the senior from Baltimore. Recruited to this program by Mark Duffner and coached by Ron Vanderlinden. And of course now here he is enjoying his last season in the Maryland uniform under the tutelage of Ralph Friedgen. It's, it's been a lot of disappointing Saturdays for him. And uh, this is very rewarding to see Maryland do this well. You feel good about kids who have endured the program, didn't transfer, go to class, you know, meet their obligations of the scholarship. And then if they get a chance to go out 
you know, as a winner, as a champion, there's, there's just nothing more satisfying. Part of a great linebacking crew that includes also E.J. Henderson, and he experienced a lot of lows and very highs during his career at Maryland. Needless to say, he's enjoying every minute of this special occasion. Well, you know, it's better. You get a lot more attention. You know, you play football, good games, man. Good luck Saturday. I'm coming to the game. You know, you get that. When opposed to back in the day, you know, you wouldn't even get spoke to regardless. You got your jacket on with your number on it, you know, they just look at you and play football. But now, you know, people speak to you. You got people in your class that'll speak to you. It's good to be king or undefeated or both. And right now, Maryland king on campus. There's E.J. Henderson. You just heard him. The pass to Ertel Jack incomplete. And it brings up fourth down. And uh, it's like playing basketball here. That's what they don't tell you. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like playing hoops. Yep. And really, both both universities, if you look at it, their basketball programs are so dominant yes. that unless you win, you're going to be second-class citizen on campus. And they will be this year again. I think it'll be awesome. Oh, both teams. Yeah. Duke and Maryland in some preseason polls, they are one and two in the country. Fourth down. And here comes a long count. Trying to induce Maryland offsides and it will not work. Trey McDonald, there you see. You've done your share of those games. Just kicking team. I had the opportunity to do the tournament semifinal between them last year, which probably was one of the better games of the season. And uh, there's no love lost. Talked with one of the Maryland players yesterday and he said, I hate Duke. <laughs> I just hate him. Let's not talk about it. Here's Trey McDonald. Julian Gary back for the punt. But Derek Lee would not buy it. And flattens him down at the 10 yard line. It's a 50 yard punt and no return. And with a minute 16 left to go, Maryland armed with a timeout. Let's take a look at this play and see if there's a face mask. I thought he had a little bit of the head gear. But I just like the move. Oh, oh yeah. He's got his hand on the grill. Good to know. But you know what you talk about an inadvertent hole. He may have touched it and got rid of it. Got his yeah, he did. Right off. To his credit, he did. All right, first and ten from the ten yard line. Hill back to throw. Flats complete to the tight end Murphy. And he gets another six yards down to the 16 yard line. Coming up next week, high noon from Grove Stadium in Winston-Salem. Two no huddle offenses and two teams that can score in a hurry. Wake Forest and Clemson. And we'll bring it to you. Right here at 12 noon on your Jefferson Pilot Sports Station as Sitco presents ACC football. That's a great contest this season. It'll be tough on our producer. Won't it? Yes, it will. Here comes a play fake and Hill up the middle, and he is tripped up. Tripped up by Zelensky up the middle. Sophomore from Amherst, New York, but he gets the first down, and we have about a minute to go. This is why Maryland was able to beat Georgia Tech. They were so efficient in their hurry-up offense. Minute 36 to go downfield, and they get themselves in position for the score. Jafar Williams complete to the 30-yard line. Of course, that's something that they practice very earnestly here. Yeah, but I want that break out of bounds. They don't get it that time. They, and matter of fact, they went through it yesterday. They went through the two-minute drill on Friday uh, during their Friday practice. And if you don't get it, you're doing up and downs. Uh, Ralph Regan drills his team assiduously on drills. As a matter of fact, he does He's it hot now. What he does is keep his team out there without break. And uh, when they're gassing up and down the field, he said, this is how it'll be under real fire. And that's certainly how it was against Georgia Tech. They were a tired team because they had drilled hard on two-minute drills in practice and spent a lot of time on it. And that win over Georgia Tech did a lot of good things for Maryland. Snapped a 33-game losing streak against ranked opponents. Their first ever win at that venue. And, of course, first victory over... Uh, ranked team in 11 years. It's so much easier to run sprints after you've accomplished that. Because now you can relate to what he's talking about. That's right. Well, the message is hit home with this team, and right now they're going through another two-minute drill. Actually, a little bit under that. Well, the first time you do it, you do it on faith. You just have your belief in Ralph Regent in the program. Right. But then when he can now go back and say Thursday night's the reason why we're undefeated. And now you get everybody flying in one direction. 
Sean Hill stands in the middle of that huddle with some pretty good numbers. He's 15 out of 18, 196 yards. He's thrown for a touchdown and run for one. And he's run for 96 yards on the day. The pass to Bruce Perry. And Perry trying to search for the sidelines. But they say he did not get there. He was down at the 32-yard line. He's close to the first down. That may uh, two two I mean, both guys get out of bounds. Both of those guys should get out of bounds. Clock continues to roll with 30 seconds left. Third and inches. Hill with time will run and head for the sidelines, and he does get out of bounds. Has the first down and stops the clock at the same time. 23 seconds to go. And they will eventually take one down yonder. They will throw a deep. Yes, they will. They have to attack and try to get a pass interference and get a score. 52 points in this first half. And the Maryland Terrapins have scored each time they've had the football. Three times they've gotten it on the turnover. And if you do, you can't give this up. You cannot allow this to happen. Here comes Hill with time to pass. Going downfield, complete for Julian Gary, and he gets out of bounds. Nice gain on the play of 11, maybe 12 yards. And that gets him down to the Duke 45 yard line. Stops the clock with 17 seconds left. Nick Novak in the bullpen. <laughs> Keep yourself ready. I mean, this is exactly how it was. That's right. At Bobby Dodd Stadium. 17 seconds left to go. They probably got two plays in them before they got to send Novak out there or score. Hill, sideline throw, complete, Perry, down to the 39. That stops the clock with 12 seconds left. Still a little out of Novak's range. That would be a 56-yarder from here, so they need to get a little closer. So now you'd love to have a, tie, uh, a timeout. And if you had one play back where you got out of bounds, you'd have that now. You can hit the guy in the middle of the field. Second down and four. 12 seconds left to go. Hill back to throw again, looking, has his tight end. It is complete, but he stays in bounds, and the clock will roll off. Maryland cannot stop it again. Terrapin's trying to get over the ball quickly. Kill it, get a kill. Well, the clock stopped at four seconds first left down. to go. Now they get the ball reset. First down. And uh, reset the chains on the first down. And he'll get another shot at it here with three seconds left to go. Novak will come out and take a kick. He got the first down. That stopped the clock with four seconds left to go. The Ralph is teaching. Yep. This is what it's all about. And you bring in Rivera, your closer. 51-yard kick here for Novak. His career high, 46. The timing important here. 1.1 seconds they want him to kick in. There's the kick. It is down. No. Goodness. Lanced off the... It had enough legs, but it ran into the equipment on the way in. The kid is strong. Let's watch this again and see how close Nick Novak came to drilling a 51-yarder. If you watch him in the pregame, Steve, you know he's got the foot. The timing was right, and Bernard gave him a good hold, but he knows the result of that one. And let's go to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood standing by with Maryland coach Ralph Regan. 42, almost 45 points. Not a lot went wrong in that half. No, I think our offense is playing very well. I'd like to see our defense play a little bit better, but uh, I'm very pleased with the way our offense is playing. Up 42 to 10. What do you tell these guys now in the locker room? Nothing, nothing. That's the way we're going to approach it. Well, they certainly didn't take this for granted. They came to play today. No, they did. I'm pr very proud of them right now. We're going to have another half to play, Mike. All right. Ralph Regan headed to the locker room, and as you can tell, he feels pretty good about things, and, well, he should. His Maryland Terrapins trying to remain undefeated up 42-10 to 10 over Duke at halftime. ACC football is brought to you by... Your local Carolina Jeep dealers, official vehicles of the Carolina Panthers. Jeep, there's only one. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. By Don Pablo's, the real enchilada. And by Sitco, your neighborhood Sitco is proud to support today's athletes. Sitco, we know you. 
undefeated Maryland Terrapins, ranked 12th in the country and looking every bit like it today. Over the Duke Blue Devils, 42 to 10. We are at halftime, and you know, this is a big game coming in the middle of a couple of big games. They won against Georgia Tech, now playing Duke, then Florida State. Many thought, well, maybe they'd have a little letdown in this game. That absolutely was not the case. Maryland came out on fire from the beginning, and I thought they were on fire, particularly up front. The offensive line was manhandling the Duke defense. The option was working very well. The running game, there was no need to pass. Two rushing touchdowns made it early, 14 to nothing. And then that Maryland defense did what they have done all season long, and that's get turnovers. They have three of them in the first half, and they all resulted in some points. 21 to nothing after the first pass interception. And give Sean Hill some credit. As one coach said, you are playing your best game of the year today and patted him on the shorter. And let's take a look now at one of those plays that resulted in six of those 42 points. Number 14, Sean Hill, the senior. Looking awfully strong on play action here to his tight end, Joe Dugan. And that's one of the touchdowns that has resulted in 42 points. Now, our stat, look at rushing yards, would you? Maryland, and that's not all Bruce Perry. That's a lot of different people, including Sean Hill, who's gained a lot of ground on the option 209 to 62. And that partially accounts for the big discrepancy in the score, 42 to 10, Maryland out on top. Well, let's check some of the stats as we shape up now in the season. It's time now for Don Pablo's Best of the AC. Presented by Don Pablo's The Real Enchilada. Chris Douglas of Duke had 74 yards and a touchdown last week against Wake Forest. He's among the rushing leaders. Bruce Perry on top, averaging 145 yards a game. Terrence Williams, number two in that category. Phillip Rivers of NC State leads the league in passing yardage. He threw for 310 yards and four touchdowns last week against Clemson. Woody Dassler, number two. George Godsey of Georgia Tech is third there. One of the great defensive players in the league this year plays for Maryland. He's E.J. Henderson. Tied his career high with 18 tackles last week in the Terps win over Georgia Tech. LeVar Fisher leads that category. Ryan Fowler of Duke is number two. John Leak is third. 42 to 10, folks. Homecoming today here in College Park. A huge crowd out, and they have loved every minute of this game so far. We're at halftime. More halftime activities on the way from College Park with the Terrapins comfortably out in front. BB&T proudly presents the ACC Community Service Award, an acknowledgement of ACC football players' accomplishments off the field in supporting and strengthening our communities. Today's honoree is senior center Melvin Fowler from the University of Maryland. Melvin's an active speaker to various kids' groups in the College Park area, emphasizing the importance of staying in school and out of trouble. He's also a regular visitor to the cancer ward at Children's Hospital in Washington. BB&T, with our tradition of working hard to support and strengthen the communities where we do business, is proud to honor Melvin Fowler for his efforts in building stronger communities and enriching the lives of those around him. Six touchdowns for Maryland in the first half. Last time they had a half like this, we said it was 1984, that great comeback game against Miami. Frank Reich, the quarterback there, and Sean Hill, who wears that same number 14, has done a whale of a job here in the first half, 42 to 10. For more on this game, I hope you'll join us for ACC Live on Monday night. Jamie Dukes and I will wrap up all of these weekend's games, including the big game down in Death Valley, which is Clemson in North Carolina. That'll be our hot ticket on Monday night, and we'll look ahead to the game next week, which will be Maryland and Florida State. J.D. will have his keys to the game, and we'll have a big preview on it. That's Monday night at 6.30 on ACC Live on Sunshine Network and Fox Sports Net South, 7 o'clock on Comcast Sports Net. Check your local listings. Now let's check out some of those scores today. Time for our halftime scoreboard. And speaking of Carolina, Clemson, how about that? 35 to 3. We knew about the Tar Heel defense, but well, the offense is having some day. Kentucky and Georgia having a whale of a game tied at 22. That's in the third quarter. Auburn over Louisiana Tech 7-3. Ole Miss out in front of Middle Tennessee State 10 zip. That's in the first quarter. That is our halftime scoreboard. And the big scoreboard here reads 42 to 10. Homecoming crowd is happy. 
We'll be back, but first a word from your local ACC station. BB&T presents the ACC Player of the Week, and this week the honor goes to Woodrow Dantzler of Clemson. The senior quarterback had a record-setting performance last week in a 45-37 win over NC State. Dantzler accounted for 517 yards of total offense for the Tigers. He was nearly perfect through the air, going 23 for 27 for 333 yards and four touchdowns. He also ran for 184 yards and two TDs for his spectacular performance. Woodrow Dantzler is our BB&T ACC Player of the Week. And, well, this is their 50-year anniversary. We're going to talk to some of these guys who have to be excited about what's going on with this Maryland football team. We're going to talk to them coming up in the third quarter. I want you to hang around for that because I know they will have some insight as to what another former Maryland Terp, Ralph Regan, has done. Time now to go back to our game announcer, Steve Martin and Doc Walker. And, guys, we have talked every week about the things that Ralph Regan has done to impress us. But I'm most impressed today the way he had this team prepared and intense and absolutely no letdown, performing at a high level in this game against Duke. Well, Mike, he told us uh, yesterday that uh, he had a very intense week of practice. He, there was no doubt he didn't want this was a saddle game, really, behind Georgia Tech and ahead of Florida State, and really it was a key game for them to win, to keep up there at 7-0, and and it looks like they've done a good job of getting in that direction. Well, you never know how these young kids will handle success. I mean, they could have been intoxicated by it. All of the alums coming around, patting them on the back, saying how great you are, and then there's Duke on your schedule. But he was able to get these kids focused, and thus far, they've been nearly perfect on offense. Well, let's take a look at what they did on offense, and they got it done early. The first time that they had the football this afternoon, Sean Hill got it going. Well, Sean Hill is a guy who is taking on responsibility. As evident here, watch him run the option. I mean, this kid doesn't look like he's real agile, but he is. He's a gamer. As the game gets going, he gets it unleashed. Here, Perry, again, showing you a great 12-yard run. Not a lot. At this point, we're up 14 zip, then the big dog. I don't like this kid. He is so bulky. Get you in the end zone wearing number five. Only that's one. What's the deal with number five? I haven't been able to figure that, figure that one out yet. James Lynch with the touchdown to make it 21 nothing. Then Duke comes back on a long drive. And a little play action pass here. Pazeski gets in the end zone. That was set up by the fact that they were able to run the football early on. That made it 21 7. Then the Terrapins come back. Fake Riley comes out again. Another tight end. Duke with the nice catch. That puts it up to 28 to 7. And then they go airborne. This time, Riles hits it again for the Maryland Terrapins. And the score is getting out of control. Again, quarterback sneak right over Fowler Jr. And the Terrapins are smoking. All-time halftime stats, or all tell halftime stats go this way. Maryland in rushing yardage, 209 yards. In passing yardage, 229. This is a team that averages, Doc, 390 yards total offense a game, and they've already got 438 at the half. Now it's been a picture-perfect operation for them. Duke has got to come out and tackle a lot better in the second half. When we come back, we'll be ready for the second half kickoff. Maryland, 42, Duke, 10 at intermission. ACC football is being brought to you by Alltel. Alltel total freedom plans give you nationwide calling with no roaming or long distance charges. By Ice House. You've got a style all your own. Ice House style. Enjoy. By BB&T. BB&T. You can tell we want your business. By Sitco. Your neighborhood Sitco is proud to support today's athletes. Sitco. We know you. By Choice Hotels International, the power of being there. Go. By Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. And by Chevy, the cars you can depend on, the cars that last, will be there. Beautiful sunny day in College Park and this homecoming crowd's happy what they've seen so far as the Maryland Terrapins have run up 42 points here in the first half. Sitco presents ACC football at the break, 42 to 10. Maryland scored the first seven times they got the football. There's Sean Hill. What a day he's had already. He's already gained 117 more yards in total offense than Duke has as a team totally today. He's rushed for 99 yards on the ground. He's only misfired on three passes. 
One of those in interception, 19 of 22, and 229 yards and one touchdown. And, uh, of course, two rushing touchdowns this afternoon. Sean Hill was pretty hard of him on himself after last week showing at Georgia Tech. But I'd have to say that Ralph region has been pretty happy with his efficiency this afternoon. There's so many things to be impressed by. I'll take durability. Yep. That's number one. I mean, this kid does not, he gets up after every hit. He's 6'5", he's 221, on eight possessions. Maryland, six touchdowns, a missed field goal, and a turn. And that missed field goal was a 40, a 51 yarder. And Parson will be driven some eight yards deep in the end zone. And Sean Hill will bring the Terrapins back out to the 20 yard line. So Hill coming out for more, and that's what happened. The first six possessions they scored and it didn't matter where they were as far as field position is concerned a couple of long marches of 80 plus then the only interception of the day by Sean Hill picked up by Kenneth Stanford and then the missed field goal from 51 yards out that's what it's looked like a very efficient day for the Terrapins first and 10 from their own 20. Perry is the tailback Chad Killian at fullback here's Perry and he is tackled down there by Jim Shar, and it's a gain of about four. And let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. Yeah, I had a chance to talk to Carl Franks just a moment ago, and he said the goal of the defense is to make this team punt. They haven't done it all day. He wants to do that. And he said the team has showed great character in the locker room. There's no quit left in Duke. Remember last week against Wake Forest, they come out and scored 35 points in the second half. He reminded them of that at halftime. Down only 32 here. Here's Hill to the flats to Perry. Fowler and Terrell Smith will run him out of bounds, but it looks like he'll have the first down at the 30-yard line. You mentioned punt. That'd be great. I'd also like to see them tackle better. And that's the one thing they've worked on all week long. The emphasis this week at Duke was attacking, and they just didn't get it done in the first half. They've had several shots on the scoring plays in particular. Hill was in the grasp once. Perry was in the grasp once. Raleigh was held up once, but they all eventually scored. First and ten from the 30-yard line. Play action. Hill, big rush is on. Hit as he threw it, nearly intercepted. And that was the opportunity. And Jim Shar is the guy who got the hit. And Shar's an interesting story because he's a 24-year-old freshman. 53 Jim Shard inside linebacker. Snaps were supposed to be limited today. Yeah, you watch it. 53. Now that was that lookout block by Perry. Shard played six years of baseball and then decided to use his college football eligibility when he was a senior at, e at Erie Cathedral Prep. He was recruited by Notre Dame, Penn State, and Nebraska, but decided on baseball instead. Now he's playing linebacker for Duke. Here's Hill and Here's Charles Porter. Right there with the sack and driving back at the 23-yard line. Don't ask a senior from Columbia, Maryland. I wish I knew why. What makes the difference? And, and I'm sure the coaching staff at Duke is trying to figure out. For whatever reason, the Blue Devils are into this now. I mean, you have their attention. They, they, they're not hung up on the scoreboard, but they are competing. And they're facing third and long yardage. And if they don't get it here, they may be forced to punt for the first time this afternoon. Hill back to throw. Blitz is on. Oh, Pass complete to Perry. Here's Perry. First down yardage and more. And takes the ball out past midfield. What a call. Oh, man. The crowd is yelling Bruce. 27 yards on the hookup. Charlie Taft. I mean, that's just an outstanding call. Then you have to execute. It's not easy to do. And this, this team has shown that they can be a good screen team. And Tech was and wherever Ralph has been. It's the key to is get the big fellas up and out of the way. So you back and have some room. And you got help downfield blocking. Parsons, good effort. Hill on the option. Perry to the corner. Roberts misses, but Krill comes from behind and stops him after a five-yard game. There's Bruce Perry. Perry is subordinate to Sean Hill in rushing yards this afternoon. He had 45 yards at the half. I'm, st I'm still not convinced that Perry doesn't have a, an ankle or foot, something, yeah. that he uh, is nicked up a bit. And, they, and Ralph seems to be very insistent on two series per back. We'll see Perry for two series, and then we'll see Mark Riley. Here's the option. 
Pitch to Perry on the corner with a nice block. And Perry gets down to the 30-yard line. And the true freshman wide receiver, Rich Carson, did a great job on the corner. Yeah, Rich is a player. Return man will block for you, can catch it. I mean, he is a complete player. For a young guy, I mean, that's the same volume. And you see you ride the fullback. You know the fake works and people start bringing that guy down. And I like the way at the end Perry lowered his shoulder. He didn't take the blow. He delivered the blow. There's Perry today. Pretty good total offense today. He's got 129. And off now goes to Chad Killian. This is the fullback's first carry of the day. And he gets four yards down to the 25-yard line. Chad has been limited in his carries. Guy's been a, an outstanding blocking machine. As James Lynch, James Lynch is shown to be for Maryland. It's 256. Lynch is 261. So they got a load of yeah. You know, you can't be a little guy in their backfield. So not a fullback. Six. Hill to throw a wobbler and it is caught by Gary, complete for the first down at the Duke 17-yard line. And another doc business-like drive for Sean Hill and company, and a drive that shouldn't have been because Ronnie Hamilton had a shot at a real interception. Didn't make the play. That ball was tipped. That was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Now you watch the route. Ball reaction, very well done. Kept that foot into, very well done. Eight yard gain down to the 17. Carl Williams in motion, but this is Mark Riley. And Riley searches ahead down to the 10 yard line. So it's a nice gain of about six as we look at scores from around the ACC and elsewhere around the country. And look at this. There's a shot out Hard of Death believe. Valley. You held Woody Dantzler and company to only three points through three quarters at homecoming. And look at this one. A shock at Athens between the hedges. Kentucky by seven. Auburn trying to come back and do another great win after their win over Florida. Of course, the big game last night, Boise State taking Fresno State from the unbeaten ranks. Here's a handoff, Perry. Good phalanx of blockers in front for breaking it up. It's going to be number 48 for Duke, and that is Philip Alexander. Boy, Bruce, he had a convoy. He yeah. kind of got away from it at the end. Got third down and two coming. Maryland pushing for another score here. There's the pitch to Perry. Flag on the play. Perry leaps into the end zone for the touchdown, but let's see what the flag is back at the 10-yard line. This may be coming back. And it is. So no score, illegal procedure, the preliminary call. Ralph Friedgen, not happy. Well, let's watch the sky. Delicate procedure against the offense. Five-yard penalty, previous spot. Repeat the down. Boy, this is an impressive jump. Because you get hit. Yeah, there's Anthony Roberts underneath him. Smart move to pull his arm back in. Because that's how you break your wrist. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you break a wrist doing that was smart move. Put the pressure on your hip and hope for the best, but remove that, that arm. Oh, well, that's the pain you felt. Oh, been there. Yep, broke twice. Third down seven. Hill back to throw. Pass is complete to Jafar Williams, but did he drop the ball? Did he have a long well, got his Duke says they picked the ball up. There was no indication from the official that the play was dead. And Duke's going to get it. Fumble. Yep. Just fumble. They were trying to make a decision to see if Jafar Williams had actually caught that football. Porter picks up the loose ball. And Maryland's drive stops on a turnover. And it was a touchdown. Call back. You see Williams. I like the way he got off the line of scrimmage. Nice release. Let's take another look here. Comes inside. Yeah, he's running with that. Yeah, it's tough. Well, but if he's calling it a catch, it's, auto, it's an interception. Yeah, but the ground didn't cause the fumble. Good play. First and 10 from the 11. Hand off now to Douglas. Picks his way up to the 16. Gain of five on the play. So the turnover. Comes in here to figure, and Duke stops a long march. Maryland had worked six minutes off the clock. 
Yeah, but they didn't get the prize. That's right. And that's what Coach Freeze, and now he can face next week's practice off that one missed opportunity, and he can get after him. Second down, five. Handoff, Douglas met in the backfield. And I mean met. And that is Starks, the true freshman with Mike Whaley. You talked about Starks, Randy Starks from Waldorf, Maryland. And there's Mike Whaley from Lexington, South Carolina. They were in on the ball. I mentioned Whaley, you know, but, but you know, he, there's so many guys out there making plays. And Whaley said, wait a minute, my turn. <laughs> no, but Starks, he's, a, he's special. As a freshman, to be that in tune to what's going on and that aggressive, he's unusual. Half of his tackle so far, Don up in for Lost Yard. Third down, seven to go. Bryant with time, and now no time. Mike Whaley again. Things shut down in a hurry. And it's three downs and out for Duke, thanks to Mike Whaley on the last two plays. Great defense. Come in, you put the fire out. Your offense, you turn the ball over, and they just continue to come after you. Trey McDonald. Too. Yep. McDonald with the kick. Here's Julian Gary with that spin move. And that bought him about nine extra yards down to the 39 yard line. So a nice return by Gary. And once again, Maryland is in Duke territory with excellent field position. Up 42 to 10 in the third quarter with 819 left at Bird Stadium. Maryland first and 10 at the Duke 39 yard line after the 40 yard punt 13 yard return by Julian Gary. Here's play action for Sean Hill and here's a blitz that he dances away from and that has some running room. And knocked out of bounds by Terrell Smith and all it results in is a gain to the 26 yard line of 13 yards over the century mark today for Sean Hill. Bob Trott made the necessary adjustments defensively. And Duke has been able to apply pressure on the quarterback. Now they just got to They got to bring him down. Yeah, they had uh, they had Sean Johnson and Anthony Roberts in his grill, and they kind of went by him as if they were on skates. 11 runs, 106 yards for Sean Hill. First and 10 at the 26. Play fake over the middle. It is complete to Lynch. Big James Lynch has already scored once today. Brought down at the eight-yard line. Another gain of 18 yards. Boy, to throw it to the big dog. Uh -huh. So he moved up. He went and got in slot formation. And this is going to him all the way. Man, that's a key breaker there. Oh, oh. Big fella pulls it in. Nice block on the edge. Used all of the uniform to get it, yeah. too. First and goal from the eight. Play fake. Pass drill. End zone drop. Shanks dropped it. Maurice Shanks, the redshirt freshman from Hampton, Virginia. Nate Krill had Sean Hill in his sights. But Hill with a neat little sidestep, and Shanks was wide open. Yeah, that was unselfish on the part of Sean Hill. Sean may have scored. There you see all the action going right. They kind of stretch it down. Krill can't make the play. He steps up. That's great read. Second down and goal. Williams and Gary are the wideouts. Perry is the setback. Option Hill pitch to Perry. And he skids out of bounds. He's going to be marked out at the six, a gain of two. Look to see them go back to Shanks. I miss a kid with a lot of promise. And I, I, I guarantee you they'll, they'll, they'll find a way to come back to him. Get Rich Carson in the ballgame now. At least 10 Terrapins have caught at least one pass today. So Sean Hill is spreading the sugar. Gary is a slot on the short side of the field. Three wide out for Sean Hill. Open backfield as he rolls right. Sets, fires, no. Intended for Jafar Williams. And Jamian Small made a great play. The middle linebacker. And that brings the kick unit on. It takes so long for a play like that, uh, Steve, to develop. And you, you make a good point. When you want defensively, you got to keep so many people, so many guys in your sights, and keep them in front of you. It is very difficult. But it also shortens the real estate. Here comes 
Novak, and this kick will be 23 yards out of the hold of Brooks Bernard. And that's all Brooks has done today. Best punter in the ACC has been sidelined by the efficiency of the Maryland offense. Novak's kick is good from 23 yards out, and Maryland pushes ahead 45 to 10 over the Duke Blue Devils here at Bird Stadium in College Park. Maryland 45 to 10 over Duke. Get the call is back. And this year is your chance to win every weekend with Ice House. Saturday during the game, a few lucky consumers will get a winning phone call. And one of those winners will get to see their favorite team play all season long. It could be you. To see participating Ice House displays or visit icehouse.com to register your phone number. Ice House, official beer of the JP Sports Broadcast, would like to congratulate Margaret Kempfer from Tallahassee, Florida. Last week's Get the Call Prize winners. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents 21 or older. See displays for official rules. Sweepstakes ends November 20th, 2001. Your mileage may vary. Not available in Ontario. The kick by Very Maryland. Well Very well done. I had a few extra. Well. Oh! Wow, look out. Stanford will pick it up and head to the sidelines to make sure that football is safe. That's the second time that's happened to Chris Douglas. Let's go down to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood with some special Maryland alumni. Well, Steve, you know this team's undefeated. Well, there was a team that went the whole season undefeated. They won the Sugar Bowl in 1950. And I have a couple of the stars with their first. Jack Scarbett, the quarterback. How about this current team out on the field, Jack? Well, Mike, they look awfully good. They caught into uh, Ralph's system, and they're just playing their hearts out at every position. They sure are, and uh, right now, uh, Duke with a first down on offense. And that Duke defense still playing well, and uh, the guy beside you was a linebacker. Our producer, Scott Snyder, was telling me that you could really hit some people, and I guess all those who saw you play really know how, how strong you are. Dave Cianelli, you are a hitter, man. Well, that's what a linebacker does, but uh, everybody in our defensive team, 51, are hitters, believe me. And this team here reminds me a lot of our team in the 50s. What about this team here? I know you're proud of all the guys back today. Is there a new spirit that you're feeling for Maryland football game? I certainly think so. I've been one of these people that's been around since 50. I've really never left the program, although some of the years we kind of scratched our head and said, wait till next year, but not anymore. Dave, is there anything that remind if this team that reminds you of that team in 1950 yeah I, well particularly i was a defense on defense and they have a, a great defense there this man friedman has turned this club around and defense it's just marvelous what he's done these guys have scored what a couple of times in defense and intercepted passes and it's a different ball club your team did that that's how you won the uh, the shoot that's correct correct what, what, what does it do to you, being here since 50, to see all these people here and to see this excitement, Jack? I tell you, it's terrific. This is the first time I can remember in 20 years that the wave has gone around eight times. <laughs> you were counting, okay. Hey, Steve, I want to tell you, there's enthusiasm from all the alumni here, Jack Scarbett and Dave Cianelli. Uh, I know you're enjoying this game, and I know you're really enjoying that reunion from one of the great, great teams of all time. And certainly, I think, until this year, maybe the greatest team in Maryland history, Steve. Thank you very much, Mike. The ACC.com, your first stop for ACC info, including live stat updates from all conference games, football, press conference audio, and links to all nine schools the acc.com it's your front row seat for acc sports on the web that 1951 team did something i don't think you can get away with accomplishing beating the number one team in the country the national champion who was Don't proclaimed win. before right the bulls and they weren't sports talk shows back then but they uh, we reversed that that's right and uh they were third in the country ranked but they were unbeaten on the season and uh, tennessee was the team that won the national championship, but they settled the score there. Dee Bryant was just sacked by Randy Starks, and that's brought up this third down and 12. It was smart to, to go with that ball. That was ugly. Yeah, that could have been very painful. Maryland will send an outside backer. Pass is complete to the tight end. Mike Hart, he 
drops the football, picks it back up, and right up on the drop, Doc gained himself a yard in the process. No, it won't be good enough for the first down. Tight ends don't drop passes. He missed the pass. That was almost a lateral of sort to himself. It was an innovative play to try to pick up more yardage. <laughs> How dare you say he dropped the ball? <laughs> now watch this. That's heads up play. Just keep figuring, hey, I can do better with that. I can try to get the first down. Here's a beautiful punt by Trey McDonald. And it'll be fielded by Rich Parson, and he'll be brought down at the 33-yard line. So, change of possession here will put Maryland back on the football field offensively up 45 to 10. We'll be turned after these messages from your local ACC station. What's going on now? First and 10 for the Maryland Terrapins, and welcome to Sitco's presentation of ACC football. We're in the third quarter at College Park. Maryland's leading 45 to 10, and their team offensively is back out there on the field under the tutelage of Sean Hill. And the quarterback quickly passes out to Mark Riley, and he gets some running room. Riley's out to midfield, where he's got the first down. 14 yard game. Jeff Dugan, side by side, big tight end trying to help make an opening. We've seen a lot of Mark Riley in this game, and this is a good screen team. As you watch the big fellas out in front, there's Fowler, he gets to cut block. There you see 82, tight end Dugan, trying to protect this guy. Dugan stationed on the right side of the formation this time, handoff to Mark Riley, and he's hit in the backfield. And hit there by Harris. Micah Harris, a true freshman out of Poland, Ohio, who has uh, an interception this year already and 12 tackles, one for loss coming into this one. And that's his second one for loss. And that's what they need, what Micah just showed you. Get on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage and create havoc. Second down. Second down and 10. And um, Duke is offside. Sean Johnson went ahead of the count. The only question here is, was he drawn or did he go of his own volition? Here's Bob Trott, the defensive coordinator for the Duke Blue Devils. It's been kind of tough to rein in. That's all over at Death Valley, North Carolina has won their fifth straight 38 to 3 over Clemson and they have served notice that they are a team to be reckoned with in the ACC they have only one loss I can't wait to see that film second down on the option the pitch comes to Perry and Perry is driven out of bounds by Alexander, but he's got another Maryland first down at the 39-yard line. Let's see what the impact of that North Carolina win has on the ACC standings. That elevates them to right behind Maryland at 4-1. And, and, of course, more importantly for Clemson now, they fall into that category of four teams that has two losses. And Virginia plays tonight along with Florida State. So to try to emerge from that middle ground, you have to either stay the damage at two now with Florida State, North Carolina, and Maryland with one loss or less. Here's Hill up the throw. The pass is complete to Julian Gary. And Gary down to the 22-yard line. It's a gain of 17. John Bunning down in Carolina, man. What a job. And I remember when this club was 0-3. And, you know, we saw that club. And, again, like Duke, they never gave up. But they also have a very special defense. Here we watch Sean put it right on the money. Gary makes a nice reception, knew he'd be hit, held on. First and 10, all of the 23 of Duke. Hill has done a good measure of checking off this afternoon. Here's the option, Riley, the 20, down to the 14. I've been impressed with Mark Riley this afternoon. It reminds me of uh, Benny Malone. He's played with the Miami Dolphins and played with the Burgundy and Gold. He has that stride out of Arizona State. The way when he gets some open grass, the way he kind of kicks his legs out. It's almost an automatic five every time he touches. Well, Mike Loxley, the uh, running back coach for, for the Turbans, his cap is full. Yeah. He's got a lot of talent. Well, they thought this was going to be a three-headed monster this year with Barry, Riley, and Jason Crawford, a true freshman. Barry's antics early on changed that a bit, but Riley's getting his chance to star now. 
as he gets another Maryland first down, down to the nine yard line. And Maryland threatening again. Well, this is more in tune to their offense. We're back to balance now. 27 yards on eight rushes. Touchdown this afternoon. He's caught a couple of passes. See, at 220 pounds, I mean, that's the remarkable part about this young man. This is the big guy. 6 3 2. Riley again with Lynch, the lead blocker. He's headed down to the five. Touchdown! Courtesy of C.J. Brooks, Todd White. Look at Fowler on that side. You mentioned the big dog, James Lynch. Maryland gets all kinds of red shirts at the point of attack, and Riley dives in. I love power football. Now you see the red shirts. You see Fowler, real nice cut block. He takes care of the backside, the big dog, the question block at the point of attack. Novak with yet another point after touchdown and the Maryland Terrapins putting their highest point total of the season on the board 52 points on a seven play march and the Maryland Terrapins lead it 52 to 10 here in the third as they're having a successful homecoming thus far this afternoon well a couple of miscues following half so this is the first time they were able to take it the distance ACC fans, do your holiday shopping at Disney World while attending the new Tangerine Bowl. It's back in Orlando. This bowl game matches an ACC team against one from the Big East Conference on Thursday evening, December 20th. Make your plans now to attend for a magical holiday weekend in Orlando, the Tangerine Bowl, December 20th, the ACC and the Big East. Sounds yeah. like fun. If you look back at those standings in the ACC, you've got a lot of candidates in the postseason. Of course, Maryland is the only team that's officially qualified. They've got six wins and on the verge of seven. But others are trying to get there. And North Carolina now, with their fifth win of the season, now five and three. That's the other thing, Doc. It's October 20th. North Carolina has only three games left. Well, they started awful early, and they didn't start in good fashion. But they show, it shows you what you can do if you just hang in there. That's right. And they had to buy into Coach Bunning and his staff. And John's such a passionate man, and the kids responded to it defensively. They've always been tough. Seven play march, 65 yards. Riley from nine yards out, his second run of the day. And it only took Maryland two minutes and 59 seconds to do it. Silicovic has been active today, kicking off. Chris Douglas picks it up at the one. Runs right in to the formation there. Jamal Cochran is in there for the tackle. And let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hockwood. Well, Sean Hill has played a great game today and has just been told by the coaches, great game. Latrez will take it on home. Latrez Harrison, number four, will be your quarterback from Maryland next time they get the ball. There's Hill and Melvin Fowler sitting down next to him. And uh, there's a combination you want to keep together, but unfortunately, Ralph Region is going to have to replace it this year. Curtis Williams is the injured Maryland player down on the field. And Curtis being attended to, recovered a fumble. Sandy Worth is the team trainer. She's down there attending to Curtis Williams, and now he's going to get back up. Let's look back at those standings a bit, not only to look at who's threatening the top, but you, you got to look at some potential postseason candidates. Maryland obviously is viable. North Carolina is a viable team. Florida State, they invented viability for postseason. Clemson, uh, even with the loss today, they're four and two. Got a good part of their schedule ahead of them. Virginia gets an opportunity with a big game with Florida State tonight. And you know Georgia Tech's going to be sniffing around postseason, and so is NC State, and maybe wait for them. the throw complete to Chris Douglas and Douglas chased to the sidelines there by Hensley and Thomas three and three I mean, used to have so much to look forward to I mean, every game every week now this thing's gonna start changing oh it is fluctuating it is how about the Cavaliers hosting the Seminoles it's a so big game tonight. a huge game Matt Schaub gets his third straight start they've got uh, Billy McMullen who catches everything in the same county 
Douglas again, but no room here. Hensley meets him again, along with Swift. We're going to have a lot of new names out here in this game for the Maryland Terrapins. Well, if you're Duke, you hope there are, are a lot of new names. <laughs> you want to see the same up with these other guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen enough. Yeah. Seen enough of uh, E.J. Henderson. Yeah. <laughs> There's Dave Salazzo. The defensive coaches for the Marin and Terrapins. He's the D line coach, and they have acquitted themselves very nicely. Charles Hill is still out there, and Duran Roundtree as well. But you've got a new pool of linebackers, although Leon Joe and Aaron Thompson are still in. Here's Sharp in motion. Handoff goes to Douglas, and Douglas goes for the first down. He's going to be very close to it. Rod Little's in there for the tackle. We haven't, you know, we haven't had a Maryland punt, nor have we had a me uh, measurement today. Everything's been pretty definite. Well, we've had our games where we've had far too many penalties. You know, we haven't had my blood. No, yeah. today. Oh, last week, 30 last penalties in an NC State Clemson game was just unbelievable. Game that had a lot of scoring to it, but had a hard time gaining any tour type of rhythm. First and ten. Outs now for D. Bryant out of the shotgun. Pass downfield, picked off. Randell Jones. Chris Douglas drives him out of bounds along with Drew Stroney. But Randell Jones picks off his uh, third pass of the season. You show me an, an effective defense, and I will show you some heads up safety play. And Maryland has it in both the free and strong safety. And this kid Jones, I mean, he's played quarterback. I mean, he can do it all. They get close to a football, they make the interception. That's the third interception, the fifth turnover of the day for Duke. 19 interceptions on the season for the Maryland Terrapins. Rod Wilson got one. Tony Jackson got one. Randell Jones, who quarterbacked this team as a freshman buffer. And here's Jason Crawford on first and 10. He gets up to the 22. Go, Terps! Go! Right, you got the alumni taking part in the cheerleading this afternoon. Actually, four interceptions. 18 on the year. Five turnovers. Second down coming in about three. With Trez Harrison is your new quarterback. He's back to throw. Pass right through the hands of Maurice Shanks. Harrison from Atlanta. He's a sophomore. Haven't seen an awful lot of action because of Sean Hill's perfection this season and especially this afternoon. I'll say this. He put some heat on that last pass. He did. He threw a laser. Well, you know, before they got before they got to Hill, they thought that this guy was going to be the heir apparent in the quarterback position, which was kind of bantered around by several people. But Hill has made a strong case. This pitch goes astray, and who's going to pick it up? And Duke says they've got it. Let's see. Let's wait. I think uh, Maryland might have the edge here. Nope, it's going to be Duke. Duke picks up the loose ball. With two seconds left to go in this quarter. And the ball picked up by the middle guard, Matt Zielinski. Shows you how Sean Hill in that first unit made it look easy. At that time, timing's there, but the depth in the trailer was not there. You didn't have a good relationship in the pitch man. You watch this. He's supposed to have faith and know that that ball's going to be there. Now, was it a terrible pass? Well, not terrible. Could have made, probably made the play, but he didn't. Quarterback now for Duke, and that's going to be Adam Smith, a redshirt freshman from Orinda, California. His first play is going to be a draw to Alex Wade. Wade carries bodies up to the 30 and 4. <laughs> and that'll do it for the third quarter. So Duke has the football, but they got a long way to go. The Maryland Terrapins with a very successful three quarters of football, up 52 to 10. 
Sitko presents ACC football. The Maryland Terrapins showing their strength. Racing to 6-0. It could be 7-0. It's been a long day for Deep Bryant. On the sore end of a 52-10 count. I'd like to see his last action today. Adam Smith, redshirt freshman at quarterback. And Alex Wade takes the handoff and gets another five or six yards. Let's take a look at our stats through three quarters presented by Choice Hotels International and 611 total yards of offense. 288 yards, that's more than Duke has all told. Maryland very efficient scoring on their first six possessions of the afternoon and they never looked back since. Second down and five. Smith for his first throw of the day. Double pumping it. Knocked out of his hands. Let's see it. I think it's going to be C.J. Feldheim who deflected the ball. And it's going to be brought down at the 37-yard line. It's play by Feldheim. Tough sell now for, for coaches, especially for Maryland. To sell your kids on the fact that they have to really continue to play hard because you can avoid injury at this stage of the game if you're when you're up yeah if you continue to, to be intense they're down in five a little twist game by Maryland inside and Duke takes advantage of it and here's Alex Wade tell you what he's not looking at the score he's sitting there picking up yardage and uh, justifying getting a look as far as being a valid option in that Duke offense Alex is a player he was a player from kickoff on. He didn't just come on. He started hot. And that offensive line, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the effort. You just don't, they don't register quit. Now, they've made some mistakes, but they still bounce out of the huddle. They get down and they go after you. It's a 22-yard game. First and 10, Duke at the Maryland 40-yard line. It's not like they haven't been here at all. So they've got too many points to offset, and here is Feldheim again. With a nice grapple of Adam Smith, and he brings him down for actually a loss in the play of three. Feldheim. Yeah, this is on the quarterback. Your offensive line, dude. Get rid of the ball and avoid the sack. They did not. And uh, C.J. Feldheim, the sophomore from Parkton, Maryland. There's only one senior in that front four, that regular front four. That's Charles Hill out of the ball game now. Feldheim in there and part of a three-man front that includes Andy Starks. Moye Moore threatening the blitz and here comes Alex Wade. Gets up over the 40-yard line. Maryland defense today has been strong. Tony Jackson, first interception of the day. Of course, the blitz, Charles Hill leading that charge with Rod Little. Nice pick off by Randall Jones. The Maryland defense, look at the comparison. What a difference. Last year to this year. 119 yards. Yeah, that's coming into today. Yeah. <laughs> today they've done even better. Penalty marched off this against Maryland, by the, the way. rush defense. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the difference. Gives them a real shot. They'll get a challenge next week with Florida State. First and 10, Duke at the Maryland 25, make it the 24-yard line. Adam Smith out of the shotgun. Has some time, the pass is complete for Chris Douglas down to the 21-yard line, it's a gain of four. But when you practice at a fast tempo, and you play four quarters, no matter who you're playing against, when Florida State rolls into your schedule, you don't have to get all psyched out. Say, okay, now what are we going to change? You don't change anything. You just can't because you created habit. And that's what uh, we've heard Ralph Friedman say. We practice quick. We don't, we don't mess around. We get as many plays as we can in practice. It keeps their attention and does exactly what you said. Second down and seven. Make the throw again, and it is deflected and caught for an interception by Duran Roundtree. Helmsley made the hit. Henley, Henley made the hit. A flag down on the play. 
strongest guy on the field. Showed soft hands. <laughs> Showed his athletic. Oh, taking it back. Oh, they're going to call interference on Henley. Andrew Henley with the interference call. Hey, Interfer pass interference against the defense. That's a spot foul. Automatic first down. You know, round three spots for me when I do the heavy lifting. See if we can pick the. Oh, was there contact? Yeah, a little contact from behind. It's close. Little contact. <laughs> Tries to drag. Oh, of course. Oh boy. He's a linebacker. You can't expect him to be sane. So it's first down for Duke instead of being Maryland's ball. It's Duke football inside the 20. Here's Chris Douglas. And Douglas gets a little running room inside the 10 yard line. And very close to another Duke first down. 38 left to play. You watch Chris, and you've seen Alex Wade. You know, the, the ingredients are here. D. Bryant, D. has been banged up, but, you know, healthy. A little more speed on the edge. Maybe one guy that can really stretch for Duke. But Duke, is, be tough. But Duke has found out, like others have before them, that if you turn the football over to Maryland, you don't have a chance. They've done it five it. times today. Here's Douglas inside the five Duke pushes for a morale score here at the 1108 mark and, uh, Duke of course came in here with an 18 game losing streak longest in division one and they don't talk about it much we haven't dwelt on it too much but it's there you have to face it you're looking at number 19 in about 10 minutes Trying to get something done for the remainder of the season beyond here because they feel it's not going to last forever. And off. Douglas. Touchdown, Duke. So the Blue Devils score. But they earned that one. Yeah, they did. That was not a gimme. Helped out by the penalty, too. That wiped out what could have been the fifth or actually sixth turnover of the day. Beautiful day for football. Why would you want to leave the hometown in a homecoming matchup? And uh, the fans are hung on for this one. This is Garber for the point after. With 10.42 left to go. But Chris Douglas scores for the first time this afternoon. Douglas going from eight yards out for the touchdown. 52-17, Terry. Well, the 12th ranked Maryland Terrapins have flexed their muscles this afternoon and with a little over 10 to play. They have a big lead on the Duke Blue Devils, 52-17. There's Melvin Fowler, the center, and he has had an amazing story. We'll get back to him after the kickoff, though. And he'll settle this team down, really. He's senior in the offensive line. Here's Rich Carson, a true freshman, who returns out to the 22-yard line. We're talking about Melvin Fowler. Fowler, of course, uh, was pressed into service his freshman year when nobody, when everybody else was injured, and he's held the job ever since. Interesting story about him, Doc. Uh, his family goes to all the games. His stepbrother, Kevin Walker, there's his family. His stepbrother, Kevin Walker, was on the 40th story of the World Trade Center on September 11th and made it out. So, thank little, goodness. A little perspective, and that's added a little added dimension for him. His family's followed him everywhere. And uh, he has been really a bellwether for that Maryland offensive line. There's Melvin Fowler right there. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Well, I tell you that everybody's getting into this Maryland winning streak. I found this towel, folks. It says the Bruce is loose and the fridge is stocked. <laughs> there are a lot of them in the stands here today. <laughs> you saw some 7-0 banners as uh, the Turf Alley walk took place today. This is the Trez Harrison trying to get some reps, quarterback. And he'll call his own number and make some oh, yards. Nice. Heads to the sideline, breaks a tackle. And runs out of bounds at the Duke 46-yard line. There's the Trez Harrison. Very, very talented young man. Show some patience. You know he wants to play. And that's why I, you have some competition at this spot. Hill has taken over, but this kid is capable. 29 yards on this game. They didn't draw this up that way. No. <laughs> Even as good as Ralph Friedgen is, he didn't draw that one up that way. First and 10, Maryland at the Duke 45. 
Roberts in motion for Harris. The pitch to Jason Crawford. Well, that was a little dangerous. And he gets to about the 44-yard line. Crawford is a true freshman from Forestville, Maryland. Of course, the win today would tie Ralph Regan with Fred Goldsmith for the best start by a first-year coach in ACC history. And it would surpass the record set by Curly Bird, who won his first six games as a head coach. They named a stadium after him. What are they going to do for Ralph? <laughs> My goodness. Whatever it, whatever it is, it'll be volume. <laughs> it'll be big. Play action to Trez Harrison. And Harrison knocked out of bounds by Jamie and Small. And you know, there's the file on Ralph Regan, first Maryland alum to serve as head football coach since Bob Ward did it. And he was a Georgia Tech defensive offensive coordinator for nine of the last 14 years. He also was on hand when Maryland won their last three ACC championships, last coming in 1985. And he's back. And he's got people talking about Maryland football again. Third down for his Terrapins right now with nine to play. They're up big. Trez Harrison trying to convert the first. Jason Crawford. He's tripped up and looks like he's got that first down at the 32-yard line. Ralph Regan has such passion for Maryland. But I like the fact that he's gone right to the student body. He'll walk around him. He's on campus. He wants to get that top row stands here at Maryland filled up. Just Keith Crawford shows you why everybody's been so impressed, you know, with his skills. But it's about bringing people back out to ball games. And he, he told me he will not be satisfied until this place is packed all the way at the top. And of course, uh, Ralph Friedgen not only working the students over, but he's trying to build the Terrapin Club as they try to raise funds for better football facilities here. Here's Jason Crawford again down to the 22-yard line. Maryland threatening to score again. They're in the red zone. Well, if you look across the ACC, there's constructors, cranes at every yep. stadium. I mean, people are, are really putting a lot of money into the football program, and Ralph doesn't want to get caught, you know, stagnant. They want to be right on the cutting edge, because like it or not, 17-year-old kids want to see glitter. That's right. And he's got some great things planned. He's, he talked to me yesterday about they have a $5 million fund drive to improve uh, the Gossett football team house. And uh, that was built not too long ago on the last improvement here at Bird Stadium. And of course, this staff that he's put together is not short on experience either. Look at that. The most experienced staffs. This is from the head coach and coordinators. Their combined years of experience. Friedgen at 28, Charlie Taft, the offensive coordinator, and Gary Blackney, 31 years, including 10 years, the last 10 years as head coach at Bowling Green. And he doesn't micromanage. I mean, you know, Ralph is void of ego. He allows guys who we trust to do their jobs. It was, in fact, George O'Leary who recommended Gary Blackney for the staff. Here's the pass. It is complete. And this is Roberts. Mike Roberts. Wide receiver. You they mentioned George O'Leary. He deserves a lot of credit as well. And Ralph has always been mindful of that because he allowed Ralph to run his system and to run his side of the ball. Ralph has in return allowed Charles Tapp to do that. Ralph has the overall program well on the check, but he allows his coaches to coach. And as a result, the players respect those guys. Third down coming. Maryland here with a big lead and trying to build on it. Trying to develop some depth. There's Jason Crawford, but he's hit by Nate Krill. Let's go to the sidelines as Mike Hogwood goes to the very top of the administration ladder here in Maryland. Oh, yeah, you're right. This is Maryland's president, Dr. Dan Mode, and well, I know you've got to be excited about this football team. <laughs> yeah, you, you certainly do have to. If you can't be excited about this football team, you've got some kind of problem. A chancellor told me once that athletics is the front porch to any uh, institution of higher learning. And what basketball and football has done has brought a lot of attention to this school, this university. Well, I think it's certainly true that uh, athletic programs bring a lot of visibility to the university. There are very few things we have that bring tens of thousands of people to the campus. And it brings them essentially attention to millions of people to what's going on at the campus. And I think a very, uh, it, it, it gives us a very big opportunity to 
open ourselves up to for a lot of programs, academic and other kinds of programs, to people that are friends of ours. And the Terps just made a first down on fourth and four. Uh, are you a big fan? Or, and I know the, uh, the entire student body, the faculty, the whole school is getting the fever with this football team. Well, of course, I'm a big fan. I like uh, all sports. I like, you know, women's lacrosse and bas men's basketball, women's basketball, football. And I, I come to all the games I can come to, and I, uh, I, I'm just thrilled with what we're doing here. Actually. All right, let's go back to Steve Martin. Here's Jason Crawford pulling his way down to the five-yard line. You saw Latrez Harrison pick up the first down on fourth down. And there's a lot to be happy about athletically here at Maryland. A big student body of 30,000 plus. It's one of the, if not the biggest school in the ACC. They have a lot of earning potential. This untapped. Right. And if they ever put it all together, then look out. Second down and goal. And... Ralph Friedgen is determined to get Jason Crawford into the end zone. He stopped cold, though, by the heart of the Duke defense. Ralph said yesterday, he said, this has done wonders for recruiting. Kids who had us seventh or eighth on the list, he said, now are coming in and visiting. And, of course, you know, this is a region of the country that Penn State has been able to dominate yes. in terms of recruiting. And now Penn State having an off year for Joe Paterno and Ralph Friedgen and the Maryland Terrapins looking to step into that boy. There's a ton of school-age talent. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, here in Maryland, suburban Washington, D.C., and Northern Virginia. Here's the Trent Harrison touchdown. Maryland. Yeah, kid has, kid's a playmaker. Instinctive runner. And you mentioned that Penn State took some of the best talent in this area out last year. Right. I think that's the last year for that. Michigan, Florida State has also done well. So when you win, you get a chance to keep kids at home. And Maryland's got it rolling here at homecoming this afternoon. They score with 4.33 left to play. 13 plays, and they rub six minutes off the clock as Nick Novak is a busy guy. And all of a sudden, a big man on campus puts Maryland on top, 59 to 17, with 4.33 left to play. Back after this message from Advance Auto Parts. There's the kickoff as Maryland pushes their lead out, 59-17. And Chris Douglas still returning kickoffs after the 22-yard line. And let's get down to the sidelines for more from Mike Hogwood. Well, everybody on the bench has had a chance to play their position today except for one, and that's the punter, Brooks <laughs> Bernard. He hasn't punted today. He says it's the first time in his career as a punter he's never had to go in the game of performance. I said, well, is it having fun today? He says it's been a very relaxing day. Well, his Fridays are busy enough, Mike. He walks the field with his father on home games, and he practices punting for at least two hours. I think he gets at least 200 kicks away. And Duke's got another quarterback. They've got another running back carrying the ball. That's Cedric Dargan. The quarterback is Chris Wispelway. He's the third uh, quarterback to come in this afternoon for the Duke Blue Devils. 14 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Word on Whistle Way is that he is a redshirt freshman from Compton Plains, New Jersey. In the metropolitan New York area. Tough situation to be thrown into. A lot of chance uh, for activity under a live fire and Dargan gets the carry once again and not much yardage there as Ralph Regan seen his defense operate on all cylinders. Look at this. It's the total day approaching 700 yards. The Maryland record 802. And of course the pass offense is something that Ralph was concerned about. It's efficiency. And I have to say today that uh, Sean Hill has executed very efficiently this afternoon pulling uh, Virginia or rather Maryland to within three points of their team high since 1975 and uh, we've got a Bloody nose administered to Andrew Henley. And coming up next week, we're going to take you to Winston-Salem Grove Stadium. Two teams that don't like to huddle and like to put points on the board. It's Woodrow Dantzler and the Clemson Tigers against a multidimensional offense from new coach Jim Grove of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. It's our first look at them, and we hope you'll enjoy it and be with us next Saturday at 12 noon from Wake Forest, Winston-Salem Grove Stadium. 
Clemson and Wake Forest. Clemson trying to come back from their loss today. They were manhandled by North Carolina and scored only three points this afternoon. Wake Forest, of course, had to hold on to beat Duke last week after getting a 28-0 lead. And it will be on most of these same stations at 12 noon in Winston-Salem. Two exciting offenses. James McPherson, quarterback for Wake Forest, scores around the country in the ACC. North Carolina ringing the bell for the fifth straight time. 38-3 over the Clemson Tigers. And uh, look at this one. Georgia was down 29-22 and scored 21 unanswered points. They lead in the fourth between the hedges. Auburn at the half, following up their big win over Florida. Ole Miss, being Middle Tennessee, stayed out of conference today in the SEC. And Tennessee leading Alabama there in the first quarter down in Tuscaloosa. Ball State, the lead over 25th ranked Toledo. Of course, Fresno State taken out of the unbeaten ranks last night. Their coach, Patrick Hill, said there goes our BCS chances. Boise State came from a 20 to 7 deficit and beat them 35 to 30. And, uh, you know, it was a heck of a lot of fun, fourth quarter, watching that, and you just, you didn't know, but it's two weeks in a row, they played it very, very close. They needed a field goal to beat Colorado State last week. Look at the 7-0 signs are up, and Maryland is just three and a half minutes away from that, as Andrew Henley is still injured on the field. Big homecoming crowd. There was still about 8,000 shy of a sellout here today when the day started. And so Henley with a broken nose, Sandy Worth, the trainer, taking him to the field house. And he'll be looked at there. So every precaution taken is Henley. Goes to the sidelines for the first time. Red jerseys, red pants for the Maryland Terrapins. I got a feeling that we will see those again. Ralph Coach Friedman won't be, you know, he won't be too hesitant. Well, developing a lot of traditions here. We talked about uh, breakfast with the fridge on Friday. The, we showed you the walk down uh, Turf Alley. He wants his team to read new life and take you back to the glory days of Maryland football. I want dinner with the fridge. <laughs> that, that'd be with, with you and me in the fridge. That'd be quite a task. That's right. We give the bill again to Scott Snyder. That's right. Here's, here's the end around Kyle Moore who has not been present in this ballgame since he dropped the football. By the way, Scott Snyder showed a lot of courage today, Steve, as you well know, in his attempt to lead the crew and uh, really put on an exhibition. There are no heights that he won't scale. No, no. Capable of doing things that most would shy away from. And look at him earlier there today. Is. There he is. Of course, there was a small wager on this. Well, yeah, there's a crew. Crew he, looking he, at him. He's gonna take it all the way to the top. No, he's yeah. not. Well, no, he no, will. He's not. He will quit. Oh, no. <laughs> Our producer, Scott Snyder. We razz him quite a bit here, but his thoughts in the right place. Whistle play <laughs> with a pass to Powell. And watch, and, and of course, Scott had help at the bottom, and I'm, I'm not surprised. Look, as he comes down, look who's back there cheering him on. Look, over to the right. There he is. There's Doc. <laughs> Doc says, would another 20 get you all the way up that thing? <laughs> well, we tried. <laughs> Fourth down. <laughs> if he have been in a little better uh, cardiovascular condition, I think he'd have made it. <laughs> Here's Rich Parson, and he's flat back at the 18-yard line after the punt. 2.16 left to go in this one, but the issue well in hand. The Maryland Terrapins are headed to 7-0 as they lead Duke. Well, after a 40-yard punt, we've already run two plays. Uh, apparently, <laughs> we lost control of the game somewhere. The official said, oh, let's go. How'd that happen? Let's, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody must be late for something because I'll tell you, we've, we're into the third play of the drive. We certainly apologize. We've, we've tried to hold it up. And Chris Kelly fumbles the football and will fall on it. And that'll bring up fourth down as we get to the final minute of the play. Uh, the 7-0 shouts ring out, and lo and behold, for the first time today, Brooks Bernard will come out onto the football field. And the clock runs down. Duke not making, making any attempt to stop it. And Maryland kind of taking their time here as the play clock goes down, and we'll have another penalty. 
Play clock rolling down to five seconds, and they're going to take their time in the huddle here. And we'll get a penalty here. And the punt unit is on. There's Thomas Zamorski with the call. Time to announce our Texas P players for the game. Alex Wade, good day for him for the Duke Blue Devils. 13 carries and 88 yards. And Sean Hill, 428 total yards today and three touchdowns he's responsible for. Two that he rushed for and one that he threw for. And here's Brooks Bernard for the first time today. Six seconds left. Likely the last play of the game. This is Ronnie Hamilton's first punt return of the day. And the ball game is over. <laughs> he returns it to the 46-yard line. And for the first time since 1978, the Maryland Terrapins are 7-0 and as they run roughshod over the Duke Blue Devils and send them to their seventh defeat, their 19th straight. But it's a happy day for homecoming. The Terrapins solidify their perch atop the ACC. They have uh, no losses in the conference this season. Mike Hogwood is down on the field. Well, we're trying to get a hold of Ralph Freach, and he's getting ready to run and go sing with the, it's one of the traditions that they do. See, let me throw it back up to you. I'm going to grab Ralph. I'm going to have to catch up with him. This guy's running pretty fast. You can do it, Hog. Hold on. We've got Sean Hill here. and Let me grab Sean for a second. Sean, before you go sing, what a game. What a performance. Oh, thank you very much, Al. You know, that's something we wanted to do going into this game is put it all together, and, uh, you know, we were able to get the passing game and running game going. So. What, what was the key in this game early on? The running game was absolutely incredible. It was the running game. Uh, we just we just kept it on them, uh, scored about probably the first four touchdowns and nothing but runs. So I, I know. It's a good game, Sean. I know you want to go sing to the crowd over here. Steve, well, well, Mike, why don't you go over there and run and sing, too? Oh, Hawk, get in there with us. Hey, it. just because you don't know the words. <laughs> Hawk knows it. Hawk can sing. He's a world-class vocalist. But at least for the last five seconds, he stayed pace for no, pace with Sean Hill. Gotta give Hawk I like that. Credit. There's Ralph Regan now. Uh, traditions are very strong to him. He's going to address the student body. <laughs> this is this is a, this is karaoke with forty thousand. <laughs> and there's there's Ralph Friedgen and the band is playing on and they're happy here in Maryland as the Terrapins win it here big. 59-17 before a homecoming crowd of 40,000. And that's amazing. Before they go to the locker room to talk about their win, they share the win with the fans. And Ralph Friedgen, very happy with the way his football team performed this afternoon. 59-17 winners over Duke. We'll be right back. The Sitco ACC Game of the Week has been brought to you by Sitco. Your neighborhood Sitco is proud to support today's athletes. Sitco, we know you. By Chevy, the cars you can depend on, the cars that last, will be there. By Choice Hotels International, the power of being there, go. And by Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. Beautiful day in College Park and a successful end to it as Maryland wins 59-17 over Duke at homecoming and they make it 7-0. What efficiency today in 14 possessions, eight touchdowns, a field goal, and just one punt with 11 seconds to go in the game. Almost 700 total yards, 697. They had 300.